Eita o que? That's a lot of exposure. Okay. Welcome back, one and all, to our glorious spell jamming game. Last session, the party did what he did best, which is make money. Uh, you guys uh, went about and uh, tried to find some stuff uh, to do to earn some money or your keep. Um, uh, you guys got the comedy club set up, uh, best medicine um, finally set up. Uh, it is a, uh, it's got a little artificer workshop in the basement where everything is stored. It's got a, um, a little medic situation upstairs and it's got a, it's got a nice little comedy show and bar downstairs. Um, staff was hired by, uh, our wonderful cleric chaplain who was, uh, growing in prominence and power and cash and all of that. You guys combined your resources, um, after taking on a couple jobs. Uh, the DM made a mistake and misheard uh, something, and, and we ran with it, and you guys took a, a kind of shady, shitty uh, individual for all she's worth. Um, whoops. And you guys uh, also, and we're going to say that you also did like a job for another like local uh, sort of like flash dancing, um, groovy uh, gang called the Midnight Syndicate uh, and help them get some drugs off the streets. Uh, and with that, you guys made just enough cashola to buy the, the big bad turtle ship you've always wanted. You guys are now the proud owners of this big bad flying fortress you've always desired. Um, now, you guys will be able to take on contracts that no one else should be able to take up. You guys are going to be one specialized crew going to only the most dangerous places to complete the most dangerous contracts and probably earn a butt ton of cash while you do it. But the danger, no doubt, will be more than it was. And that is where we pick up today. Um, I do need to furnish the turtle ship, so my apologies there, but I will make sure that's done next week. I was going to do it last night uh, before I went to bed, but I was celebrating because the Feywild game was completed. So I... Whoops. Um, but don't worry, it'll be done for next week. But in the meantime, your turtle ship is ready to go. Uh, maybe we'll make some adjustments while we play. But as you are on the Rock of Brawl, you have your big glorious turtle ship. What would you all like to do? You've got to name this ship. You've got to, you got to pick up a job. you got to celebrate. you got all kinds of things you got to do. All, all good problems to have. Oh, remind me what our job was. Oh, we don't have a job yet. Oh, okay. Oh, we got to pick up a job. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, um, uh, did we land on our name? I think we chose. We were talking about the prophet's demise, but that was like out of character. <laughs> right. Same. I, I thought that's what we settled on. Ooh, the prophet's demise. Wow. There's a chance the prophet's cool. demise ends up crashing and exploding. You know, we, we got the stats, baby. You know, we need so uh, but but if you guys are willing, I'm, I'm willing to put the stamp on it. I mean, this is like the most expensive ship we can get. <laughs> Ideally, it, it's pretty. Uh, this this will be hard to sink. It's possible. I mean, anything's possible, but this one is going to be pretty hard to sink. It is very fortressy looking. Like 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 if you look at it, this is like shit. Like, it yeah, it's, it's metal plated. Uh, I did post the uh, floor plan for you guys in the Spell Jammer Facebook chat as a reminder. So if anyone wanted to scroll up and take a look at it. And like no shade against like woodpeckers, but like turtles are cool, you know. Turtles look like a <laughs> like I don't know, like little birds, like oh man, they get like a solid fifteen. Turtles, they're fucking like dinosaurs, dude. <laughs> <laughs> fucking dinosaurs, dude. <laughs> There's, uh, I'm, I, I say we call it the promised demise. Let's, you know, we're and. 
Truth be told, we should be getting a boon something soon, so we might be more on course for that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll vote for it. I'll, I'll say my vote for Prophet's Demise. I think it sounds like John's on his way in. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, okay. And Steph is 1.5 commissions away. I don't know what that means. I didn't want to <laughs> press her, but that's what she told me. Got it. Um, Prophet's Demise it is. That seems to be the one to go with. Uh, you guys stamp the, sign the paperwork, whatever. Um, this will officially be known as the Prophet's Demise. Um, very cool. Um, yeah, man. I'm, Sweet guys, you guys have always wanted this. I'm very happy for you. Wow. All right. Uh, AC, did you say you had some? Uh... Yeah, some artificeries to uh, roll for. Hopefully, uh, I don't know. I imagine like Ed got shoved in his little work worker closet when I wasn't <laughs> here. Um I mainly i mainly wanna combine his fish suit and like a medium armor because like as as dope as it was wearing the track suit for this long, I has been getting rocked in fights. He's been he, he learned how to he's he's got those blacksmithing tools. So I kinda wanted him to figure out if he can combine the two. I don't know if that'd be possible. I uh because I, I have the fish suit, but it, it's not really like, it's an armor, but it, it really just describes that like, I can breathe with space, which is really cool. But I'm like, I don't know, does that count as an armor? I was uh, just thinking of making, Ed was gonna kind of like, make some sort of like Half-Life 2 jump sort of lit deal. Hmm. Um, go ahead and make me an Arcana check. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Cause this, this, the suit itself is not armor. So what you would be doing is taking it and turning it into armor. Yeah, um, that's my question there, right? Cause it's like magic. Right, cool. And, um, uh, per the new rules, I'll give you advantage cause that's, that's how they work. So you're trying to do a smithing based thing. You have proficiency. Go ahead and take advantage. Go ahead and roll me a kind of advantage. That's cool. Uh, that's a 15 plus 7, 22. 22. Very good. Uh, not impossible, but also not probable. This is a very, um, this is a, it's a very rare item. It is a, a very expensive, hard to obtain item. Um, it is very bulky for, you know, there are magical implements in it, but it also is a matter of like, it's also like a tinkerer sort of thing, um, an artificery thing, um, and it is very delicate. The addition of plates would uh, certainly make it A, more difficult to wear, and B, possibly compromise the suit itself. It would be a remarkable challenge. It'd be like trying to make like like a modern day, like, that'd be like trying to combine a modern day like astronaut suit with full plate, which is like, okay. the logistics of that is like, remarkably difficult uh to make both of them work at the same time especially because it needs to be so bulky and the additional weight of the plate um could like impact the suit and create like holes in the actual uh rig so very difficult it's something you could try and start to work on not something you'll accomplish overnight okay cool i uh just kind of listening to a suit of armor would be like you'd be turning this into like a legendary item. Like this would be the creation of a legendary item. Sick. So I guess like for na narratively speaking, just the theory of it is okay. He's just been playing with that. Like Theoretically, uh, yeah. like you don't know if it's possible. And if it is possible, it's going to take a long time to, to, to figure out, let alone complete the building of, which building it could take months. Cool. Um, all so right. It's a humongous project. 
Can I get myself just like a regular medium armor for uh, yeah. um, build that? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I'll do that. And, yeah, uh, it's this the Rocket Brawl. Uh, you could go and find whatever suit you like from any number of armors around. Feel free to take your pick and drop the gold necessary to buy it. Yeah. I, uh, I just want to get a protection and I am a profession with it, so might as well, right? I, uh, it'll probably just get whatever, like, basic that he has and then play with it whenever he gets a chance to, like, mess around with it. Just so, like, you know, he'll, not, he'll he won't do any sort of, like, artifice material, but he'll, he'll, uh, he'll do, like, you know, he'll make it his own. Very cool. Yeah, you get your, uh, yeah. you get this, like, off the street, if you wanted, you could get like the raw materials and build your own. Uh, suit yeah, of armor. let me do that. That'd be that'd be cool. That'd be more. Uh, sure. Need. What uh, suit of armor uh, do you want then, if that's the case? Um, so I had, I guess, the best one I could get with medium, and I have only 160 gold. So whatever I can okay. do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me let you know. Um, well, the good news is if you're creating out of raw materials, it's going to be yeah. only half the price because that's the crafting price. But let's take a look. Medium armor, 160. Uh, wait, let's see. You could, uh, for 160, ugh, breastplate's a little much. Um, you're 40 gold short of the raw materials it would take to create a uh, breastplate. But you could go for scale mail uh, very easily. It would be 25 gold for the raw materials to make scale mail. Uh, and uh, so I, I said, just for clarity, I said I had 160. So. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So if you I had have... 40 additional gold, you'd be able to meet the raw material creation costs of the breastplate. If you're gonna build it yourself. Okay. I um in that case, uh and my uh, and my just wait and uh build build that one instead of spending his funds now. You know, he's been he's been okay so far. And okay. uh is there a way I can maybe have him um cook up like a little like little customization with this like future breastplate? Like, uh, uh, if you're building it yourself, you can, if you're building it yourself, you can, you can, the final product, like it has to be a breastplate, of course, but it can look however you want it to look. Cool. cool or okay. sorry, the, the four, uh, yeah, it has to be a breastplate, but at the end of the day, it can look however you want it to look. Any additional, okay. but like, as far as like modifications or making it better go, you can utilize your infusions, but otherwise, yeah, that'll, that'll cost extra. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. So yeah, I uh, that sounds close to Ben's house, Steve. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Did you say you were like forty gold shy of something? Yeah. Well, if I mean, I assume that at some point, uh, Chaplin attempts to you know assist a little bit or at least check in on Ed while he's working on these things. If that would have come up in conversation. That you were 40 gold shy of the materials you needed to make something you want um i'm sure chaplain would offer to give you 40 gold actually uh i'll sure then I'll, I'll definitely take that i uh how, how much money are you making now chaplain with this whole fun thing sorry i've been kind of coming and going yeah how much did we decide he was making a day uh, I think so we rolled for it. I yeah, think we so rolled for like it's success, yeah? Yeah, so essentially how it works is that at any given point where you go to receive your funds, we roll a dice and it will determine how well it's been doing. You'll get certain like benefits based on the location and like who you've hired and so on and so forth. But uh, it it... it it depends on the dice roll. You could you could take losses, but you could also get um, uh, boons. Is like it could go very well. Like last time, your your opening week was about as good as it could have gone. You made it three times your your uh, your your costs. 
I uh, I actually really, really love that it's uh, dynamic versus static. That's fantastic. I like the idea that there's a, uh, a potential for loss and that there's varying degrees of success. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's worth pointing out that you get a big bonus when you're there to help run it. Um, it will, you see, I'll, I'll tell you straight up, um, like you have a lot of competitors around you. That's a detriment. Um, but you are providing, uh, you're the guy who you have running the place very much fits with it. So you get a bonus for that. Um, so they kind of even themselves out. So right now you kind of got a static zero, but when you're there running the place, um, you get like a big bonus, uh, to the, the potential success of that, that time. Uh, but right. yeah. So to answer your question, Ed, uh, so far the first week's been really good. Oh, uh, congratulations! Uh, uh, th th thanks for this. Yeah, it was, uh, I was thinking I'm taking a lot of like big hits, you know. But uh, we're probably gonna be taking a lot bigger jobs now, which means bigger hits to take. And uh, I, I'm gonna stick around. So, uh, well, I, uh, uh, I know you've been uh, enjoying the. Uh, first level where you and I and the poxy units have a little space to uh, tinker. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, and, you know I uh, you ever need, you know, not, not, not a headliner, but, you know, an opener. I got a little type 5 been working on, you know. Oh, okay. Sounds good. And, uh, yeah, you know, I, uh, you know, it's, it's Joseph, you know, yeah, that I think you were in the basement, but we had uh, Shaka perform the other day uh, for the opening night. Uh, that, that must have gone not so well, huh? Actually, uh, she kind of won them over. It started out a little rocky, but uh, ended up relatively positive. Well, uh, well I'm about to hear that. I, uh, but yeah, you know, I, I, I got a tight five. It's uh, most of the story. And, uh, and uh, he, uh, I would probably shy away from. If, if that, he, he, it's clear like this is a bad idea. Ed's type five would be terrible, but yeah, you know, he, he <laughs> believes you can. And, uh, and uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go uh, get, get get see if I can get those materials, get filling before we uh, find out what we do next. And, um, Congratulations again, Chaplin. Uh, thank you. We were very excited to uh, get it up and going. I think everybody was uh, kind of relieved and uh, and amused to see it running. Absolutely. Especially considering its origins. You know, the people that were, well, on the bottom of it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's only been up since. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's something else we'll have to talk about in the future. There is a a space underneath now, and uh, I may ask you to help me put some stuff down there. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, whatever ideas you got, I'll uh, help out as best I can. Uh, you you get me those plans, and we'll we'll we'll. we'll, we'll, we'll Look and see what we can do down there. I'm gonna go uh, head, head on over to the shops now. All right. So it should have the money he needs to do uh, what it was he was waiting to do. Oh. Okay. All right. Now you go out and you find and purchase probably a number of steel ingots, um, uh, just like sheets of leather, um, chain. Whatever you would need to, you know, whatever raw materials you'd require to create a breastplate. And um, let's see, let's see how many days it's going to take you to make this thing. It might take a while. Um, okay, let's see. Um, to determine how many days uh, it takes to make an item, divide its purchase cost by, in GP, by 10. Uh, round a fraction up by a day. So, 
your armor is it'll take 40 days to complete this breastplate Well, I'm sure I can keep it like in a work in progress, so I can move it from workshop to workshop. Or yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah, of course. All right. I'll just keep a day tracker. I'll keep asking you, and then, then I'll put it in my. Yeah, it is worth pointing out that a day of work is considered eight hours of work, like a full okay. work day. Yeah, but you so have I'll keep it for like time down time. The... Yeah, but you you guys have plenty of travel time across the uh, the astral sea to do stuff, so. Yeah. Oh, good. You need to teach that rule to the people that work for me in real life. They eight hours is a full work day. <laughs> it says <laughs> here in the player's handbook, guys. Come on. <laughs> um, but that's only for crafting. Oh, okay, I guess they're right. Um, okay. Uh, sweet. So I just want to remind you guys about your facilities on your ship here. Uh, super duper quick because... Uh, there is at least one, you know, it's also your ship. If you decide you're like, ah, oh, we don't need that part of the ship, that's totally up to you. Uh, your ship, your, how you run it, how you want. So, again, it needs to be furnished. My apologies. Um, maybe lit a little better because it's kind of fucking dark on here. Jeez, you really just can't see shit in here, huh? All uh, right. Okay, you know what? We're not going to... It's fine. So you guys have quite a few facilities aboard this ship. Um, you have, you know, you got your bridge. Uh, you've got the spell jamming helm, which is a little bit more sort of quartered to the words the back of the helm. Um, and then you got all the basic necessities. You got a mess hall. You got a galley. You got captain's quarters. You even got a stateroom which is cool, by the way. And again, you don't need to use it as a stateroom if you don't want to, it's just a room. But essentially what a stateroom is, is like if you have someone important aboard your ship, like they have somewhere very nice to stay, or it could be retrofitted to be like a dining hall, like a nice place to take meals. Uh, it's like your dining room in your house kind of thing. Um, so you could do with that what you will. You also, probably very happy for you, Chaplain, there's a sick bay. There's a little place just for you to, to tend the wounded and so on and so forth. Uh, as a reminder, your cargo hold is on your, it, like the floor is on the gravity plane. So when you put stuff in the cargo hold, you'll need to strap it down or it's going to go whoop, and it's gonna hit the roof uh, the moment you leave uh, anyone's gravity plane, which isn't necessarily a bad thing for storage purposes. Um, so that lots of potential there. And last but not least, Outside of the normal floor plans, um, there is a, there's a big room up here which currently has no purpose and won't have a purpose until you guys decide to do something with it. Maybe that's your crafter's room. Maybe that's uh, where the epoxy units lie. Maybe that's where you... Uh, it's a secondary cargo hold. Whatever you want to do. Um, so this room remains completely at your discretion, how you'd like to decorate it, what you'd like to do with it. Um, and those, but one thing is certain is that this room gives you passage to the ballistas on the front of the ship and, or yeah, the ballistas on the front of the ship and the mangonel at the back. So you also got some crew to hire as well, uh, to man all of these many stations. Okay. So with the epoxy units. Um, and that leaves us a, oh, it was 13, wasn't it, we needed for the ship? Yeah, so let's see here. Um, each of you serve an important purpose on this ship. Um, Ed is a spell jammer. It might be good to hire a second spell jammer as you had Celine doing it just so that Ed can sleep <laughs> at some point during the journey. Uh -huh. Um, and then any, it's also pointing out that anyone who can have spell casting abilities can take over for Ed, um, on the downtime when not busy. So that could be Chaplain, that could be Aetherith, that could be, uh, either you guys, or Bassan, you have spell casting, right? You, you're, you're a Gith Yankee, so you just get that for free. Um, um. It's Zerai. It's Zerai. It's Zerai, it's Zerai. My apologies, my apologies. Um, 
uh, and then Shaka could too. So if you wanted to, you could go and buy another spell jammer, or one of you four could be like, yeah, we'll take the Alk shift for Ed, your decision. Um, but then uh, Etheris and Chaplin have impl- and Shaka. Well, I guess that'll be up to Shaka what she wants to do uh, with her capabilities. But Etherith and Chaplin have important responsibilities aboard the ship that don't involve ballistas or spell jamming. Uh, whereas Zalais and Basan, you guys are artillerists, which means that you probably want to hire two additional individuals who are skilled artillerists who can utilize your siege weaponry with good effect. Um, and then you've got your poxy units. One, two, one, two, one, two. Um, who can man all of your ballistas. Yeah. But you're going to need four additional crew members to uh, keep your mangonel working in good repair. So you're going to need two artillerists, four just general crewmen. Uh-huh. That would be op- how to, that would be optimal crew for your for your ship. I'd say uh, Basan and uh, Ed can go uh, recruitment maybe. And I've got the quartermaster. Uh, or even uh, Basan, you can take Lena. Uh, you want which which is by you you can probably do the role if you want. Isan will look at Etherith and say, Help. Yes. We got it, Captain. Well, uh, Etherith can join us, yeah. Uh, if, that's what you're, if that's what you want me to do, I'll help with the recruitment effort. Yeah, we need four hands and two artillery. I will do my very best. Um, uh, as a just a quick query, uh, this on obviously the purchase of the ship was ex- was extremely expensive. How broke are we right now? Broke. <laughs> In truth, we can't pay attention. What was that? <laughs> uh. How broke are we? <laughs> no. uh, uh, well done. <laughs> she just she just keeps nodding. No, we're broke. Broke. That was the most that was the most incredible dry delivery I have ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, you got it. So. Oh yeah. She's been studying comedy. She's been living in a comedy club. Since we are, as Bassan says, broke, I don't know how we're going to pay these extra crew members okay. or feed them. Well, we'll be paying it, it, them theoretically. We will have money to pay them when we get the next money from ah, that's installment. True subscription what what franchise what what is the word that means what we get money for every week royalties royalties it's ro- okay oh, it's true it's been a couple days you can you can pick up i'm stopped by there so we'll have stuff and what else meant that with, with this new ship our next jobs are gonna be pretty pretty hefty you know we we're gonna have candidates that are gonna want it just because of the shit. And, uh, I did yes. wish mm-hmm. you. I I, mm-hmm. I that's rosy, but not practical for recruitment, sir. Can you? Uh, yeah, she'll look at uh, she'll look at Ether and say. I have thoughts, but you're better with with the words. Can you say this better? Um, just (laughs) 
No, I'm not sure either. <laughs> I. Ship, what I need to. Do? Ship is nice. Ship is very nice. <laughs> it, n nobody. Mm, nobody will fangirl the ship. Like, that's. The ship will not help with recruiting. Well. I mean, that not, unless that's not the strategy. Unless they're someone who's into ships, but you're quite right. That are, are you aren't you losing it right now? I meant that we have a very strong ship that's gonna attract people that are looking for work. I don't know what you two are. Have you two I... done something to the ship? No, no. It's just. No. I mean, it's, from it's... I suppose our joint perspectives, if we were in the shoes of someone looking for work we would perhaps be looking more at the crew we'd be joining as opposed to the ship we would be boarding you see like these <laughs> three like teenagers walking down the street looking at your like ship that's getting like fastened up to the dock and they're like wow, <laughs> wow crew on one of those one day wow what? Like, we, people can dream and they kind of like walk away <laughs> Don't get it wrong. It's a perfect. It's it's a beautiful ship. Truly, I'm quite pr happy that we have this. It's just, I mean, when you're just uh, I don't know some ruffian running around looking at people's ships, they don't really think about the responsibility of owning it or living on it. You know, they just see the yeah. great the great you know construction and the price tag. Ugh. Oh. Right. So are you two going to be able to recruit people here? Or... Uh, yeah. Yes, we will recruit some people for you, Captain. Well, I'm going to be with you while, while it happens. I just... You guys are kind of talking crazy is what I'm saying. <laughs> what we're saying, Captain, is that everyone's like you who sees a beautiful ship and I, just I, thinks, I, I, I want to... <laughs> Above the table, didn't Ryan say that the ship unlocks higher paying jobs? That's so, if, 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 I think you guys have been on the Rock of Raw and in this society enough that, like, I don't want to, like, like, totally squash your point. I would say for, like, like, people who know what they're doing, like, the artillery, like, the, the two classes of individuals you need to hire, the specialists, which are the artillerists, the skilled hirelings, yeah, they're going to be a little more thorough. Who are we working for? Like, like, what's the captain like? What's their track record like? Um, but for all sailors, they want a crew on a cool ship. You know what I mean? Like, they're like, like it's like, am I going to crew this? Yeah, like, like, like what like, I'm saying is, in the West Indies, it's like, am I profoundly literal? Uh, like in the West Indies, it's like, am I gonna, am I gonna crew? Like, if I got a choice, am I gonna crew this like little schooner, or am I gonna crew the fucking man yeah. of war over here? You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, so Ed's saying you guys gotta like pick out the best ones amongst that, like what that attracts. Because if you're just like some grunt looking for work, you're gonna go to the big shiny one. And then you... they will care so... about the crew reputation. In fairness, that is absolutely because like. Ships are basically prisons. Like you gotta live there for days and days and days, if not months on end. So yeah, every if crews are gonna wanna are, care about what what but crews are there. But I think my point is there's both there's both points. Like it's not a it's not a full generalization. Yeah. Like people care about the crews, but people also are like that's a slick shiny new vessel. Like hell yeah, right? And like right now, probably our our best thing is the. Uh that people know about the whales, some people. And then probably our worst thing is that we have Shaco with us. <laughs> so, that uh, is honestly probably that's, the that's... biggest wrench in your whole situation is you have a scrow. And a gift, right. but I suppose the gift would be present, so like they'd know what they answer for. That is true. I, I, I forgot what the recruitment rules were, because and last time Ed did it, we got the freaking witch with the smokes. We got her, that's why, that's why he wants help this time. Last, last time we don't, got the we don't talk about her anymore. And, uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a rule come from uh, Ryan made. It was like a rule. No, no there was, you just like got a shitty rules. 
Oh, uh, over and over and over. And that's why I'm hoping. I'm hoping with Ether and Psy, we we've, we've got a good combination of some good social roles and some good like okay. natural skills. That's true. That's true. That's... And it is worth pointing out your crew, like. You gotta wave your flag a little, but yeah, you like what you did for the Star Beasts is going to draw a certain class of sailor, uh, people who care about such things. You know, you guys are in on a in a port of like people who don't care terribly about law and, and order. You will probably attract the best of them. I would also like to raise. I mean. Love the lo, lo, very much approve of the new ship name. Really, uh, you know, sets a clear marker on what our end goal is. But with that end goal, does come something resembling a disclaimer for our protective recruits that we are eventually going to try and take on a very powerful mind flare. Yeah, I thought I thought about that. It's a little bit of like. Kind of like an inside joke, but not a joke, you know. So it's you're all right about that. You know, just just a heads up if you're joining the crew, expects you fight a mind flare or two in the future. They should know. come up, come up with a good disclaimer for that. After. <laughs> <laughs> but they should. Are you know. a the villain? <laughs> that is not a good surprise. They should know. That is fair. Well, encountering a lipid kind of in your travels by chance is one thing actively hunting one is something different entirely and that is why they should uh, know going in that is fair yeah. that is a big yes. thing and not a good surprise if we have illithid and thralls on our decks again and we might that is not a good surprise that is true all this to say, Captain, um, we will be certainly trying our best to get the best of the best and, um, yeah, that, that is what we'll be doing. That is what we will be doing. All right, well, at least this time, you know, the, the two artillerists, that's, that's the key, you know, with the, the four hands, we just need some good hands, you know, so, uh, that will Put too much pressure on so I have faith. And uh do let them know who our cook is, right? Yeah. Oh, that's true. You well well Shaka's gonna be the cook, right? That's what she said. She'd take up the crew. Yeah. 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 I will endeavor to make sure that our new recruits um do not subscribe to um, discriminatory thoughts. Hello. <clears throat> um, uh, mm. We go. Uh, I start setting up shop in the shed. Are we? Are we able to? Uh, of course. No. Yeah, so. We had last I left off. We had all that RLR stuff out, like freaking uh, in the basement. <laughs> in the basement. So, uh, I'll start moving us into the ship. Yeah. All right. So Ed is going. So just to be clear about the rules, sounds like Ed, Zalace, and Chaplin are going to just start moving into the ship. Well. Yep. Etherith and Basan, your two spookiest crew members, are going to uh, go find recruits. Oh shit! <laughs> we didn't, we didn't, we didn't mean to plan it that way. Come on now. <laughs> One with literal serrated teeth, and the other with a. Basan veils when she goes into public, and when she veils, she looks very much just like an awkward elf. Okay. <laughs> Just don't look too close into her eye. They... <laughs> it's all good. I'm just kidding. But yeah, you guys can go into... Uh... So you two go into town. You go look for recruits. Um, and you guys start moving in. Um, I do need to put more like... I don't know what's going on. Because the up one here is like much better lit than the bottom. So I'm going to work on that a little bit. Yeah. But um... I, thought, 
<clears throat> I thought that last yeah. week when you opened it up, it was lit. That one's great. The, the, the upstairs uh, the one is room. good. The downstairs one is like really dark for some reason. I don't. That's where all the event horizon stuff happens. Yeah. I guess that's like the, the situation room or something. Um but anyway, you guys go to uh you're gonna go to work. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. There we go. There's some light. Um fantastic. So, um, who would like, uh, you guys are just moving in, it's fine. We don't can deal with you guys uh, in a little bit while you move in. Uh, but yeah, you guys go ahead around. Where are you two going to set up shop and find some recruits? But I, I would like to go talk to, I can never remember his name, but my beholder friend. Ah, Luigi. Luigi, I think. Luigi, yes. I would like to go talk to Luigi. Uh, yeah. The Happy Beholder. Yeah, you go to the Happy Beholder uh, and you find Luigi without issue. Uh, he's floating around, serving drinks telekinetically. It is a good vibe. Uh, he finds you and he goes, Hello, good to see you again. Uh, welcome. Uh, what can I get for you? Whatever my friend wants. I will have ale and advice. Ale and advice. Okay. Uh, so four copper for your ale. Uh, Ethereth, what would you like? Oh, I am. Um, I'm feeling I'm going to need to stay very sober for this. So nothing for me. Oh. Juice? Oh. Yes. Would you like some of my famous beholder juice? I think it's gonna like <laughs> suppresses a gag and then kind of like has a sort of like PTSD mode. <laughs> just like staring into space. <laughs> I was just remembering how my father died. Um, no. Oh, that's a. Did he die by one of my kind? Yes. What about that? I, I, oh. I forget. I'm sorry. It's fine. I, <laughs> the sound takes the most triggering place. We'll just... Um... <laughs> Luigi is my friend. He has good ideas. We have a cook. She's half scrow. She's nice. Yeah, yeah. People oh, yes. are mean to her. You... Shh, don't do that, my car. Jeez, you're working with a scrow? She's... Half. Jesus. Tell me something. How do you think that happens? Think about it. How does a half <laughs> scroll happen? Well, what a, a war crime. I don't know how you 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 humanoid. I don't know how you humanoids war mate. Crime. I imagine that she has now, a lot of. What would be the best of way of finding people? who won't be mean, who will work on the ship. Who well, won't? You're looking for sailors who are not mean? Uh, well, me, uh, who aren't going to constantly deride our crewmate, you know, habitually. Who I'll, are willing I'll to... be honest, you're, you're going to have a very hard time. I mean, like, the, 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 the war just ended, like, like a couple of months ago, like people have families and, and whatnot. So, like, I mean, you could you could always set up shop and always give it a shot and give it a try. But um, uh, frankly, I would uh, I would go with some entrapment if I were you. I'd have them sign something. But well, I do love a good contract. Just, you know, something that makes. But I find that um. People's emotions tend to trump her uh, signatures on paper. Uh, okay, let me let me ask you this: Is this scroll? Oh, is this like a a like like a real diehard scroll? Ah, um, like no. for the cause? No, no, not really. She she plays instruments and makes dice 
of good food. She So she's like affable. Has, like she's like she's not some snarling She has tusked menace. papers from officials saying she's fine. She makes food and plays the lute. Mm. It's a very it's a very cool instrument, I have to say. It, it, it is a very incredible cool. sound. It's very, very interesting. I think the trick of the matter is having your friend win those people over. If you are uh, expecting people to crew on a ship with a, uh, you know, screw, uh, you at least make sure that the screw is like, the screw's in like, a, like a decent, affable individual. And if that's the case, then just, just gotta give it a chance to win them over. Uh, I, if you put that on like the resume, I don't think you're gonna get a lot of luck. The club. We have, what? we do a recruitment at the club when they, when she plays and the people who aren't dicks get jobs. <laughs> we could try to do a little recruitment drive at the, the was it the best medicine? Mm -hmm. Although, it, I don't know how... Good it would... odds are of getting the specialists. It would get the four not specialists for sure. I would say so. Let's talk to Jeff. Listen, I, listen, everything is how you frame it, right? I mean, if you want to like give it like a like talk about the wall, like. I don't know. It's all how you frame it. Like if you find someone who's good at talking and convincing people of doing things, it's all how you, it's all how you frame things. Like, for example, like uh, if you've got a dangerous contract, don't say like, um, join our crew and there'll be good food and stuff, but also you'll probably die. You know, not a great way to frame a dangerous contract. Say instead, you know, a life of adventure and 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 facing down terrible monsters and such and and great victories and things you know focus on the positive and focus on the the good stuff it's all about how you frame things so uh maybe say um on a ship that takes all kinds uh be you plasmoid or gif you are welcome aboard our ship. And and then when they get aboard, they're going to be like, why is there a scroll here? And be like, well, we said it was a safe space. Are you not into safe spaces? And then they'll be like, we are. We're, we're very, like, I'm very left. So I've, I've, you know, they'll probably throw some, like, I have plenty of plasmoid friends or something like that. Uh, and then they'll be like, well, exactly. So if you prove it, put your money where your mouth is. I don't know. It's You just got to frame it well. Everything's in how you say things and, and charisma and such. At the risk, that I'm, seems I'm, like a good idea. It does. I've always wanted to raise questions about how is that what you did? Is I mean, is that why it's called the happy beholder as opposed to the beholder? Yeah, I call it the happy beholder rather than the slathering aberration who's a part of a race that kills a lot of people. Well, I mean, it's marketing, baby. If the, if you can do it, I suppose we can. Um, damn right. I'm running a successful tavern, and I'm a fucking beholder. I... We just need to find four people to shoot things. I also have... Feels hopeful. This might be a bit of a shot in the dark for some, but would you come with me to the upper city? I have someone... Might be use... Might have some advice, possibly even potential... Like, um... I don't know, way, means of getting our specialists. It would also help maybe to get a handle on what the um, high society wants to do about post-war relations. When when you say high society, that's when she'll throw her veil on, let it settle over her shoulders, and not at you. Alright, I can get an audience at all, but I'll give it my best shot. I want to go find, or at least try and get in contact with Godric Maine. Okay. Uh, how do you intend to go about this, out of curiosity? 
Because it was chief advisor to Prince Andrew, so I figured I would at least try the palace. Fair or whatever, enough, or whatever constitutes the palace. Yeah, head over to the palace. There's no problem there. Um, yeah, you guys start walking towards the high city. Uh, <laughs> um, no problem there. All right, let's go. Let's go to the Rock of Brawl now that the interior is a little, I think, a little better lit. Um, okay, Rock of Brawl. I need to put. I got some work to do with uh, our boards over here. Um. Okay, you guys head to the high city. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, you go to, standing at the highest point, top side, uh, you find the Palace of Starhaven, the crown of the rock. Excuse me. Uh, it is enclosed by a large set of walls, um, and uh, as you approach is where you see the royal guard is taking place. They're definitely, you know, classic sort of like, ching, like the halberd cross at the door as you guys enter. They go, Holt, what is your business? Um, greetings, I am Ethereth of the Prophet's Demise, formerly the Dawn's Eclipse. I... I was hoping if I could like, uh, have an audience with Proconsul Godric Maine. Do you have an appointment? No, but I have a feeling they sent a missive to a ship that was um, burned down not that long ago and are awaiting a response. Uh, make a persuasion check. That is 17. 17. Very good. Uh, it says, very well. Uh, and he will sort of like tru, 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 knock at the gate and someone will kind of come out of the guardhouse and he'll say, um, send a missive to Godric Maine. Uh, what is your name? Etherith. Uh, and Etherith has come to call about uh, a message that was missent. Um, they will nod and go through. Um, and you will be sort of kept here in this little courtyard. Says, please wait. We will see if Godric has time to spare for you. Kind of looks you up and down. Looking back, I look you up and down back. <laughs> okay. You guys wait for a minute. You wait for more than a minute, in fact. But, uh, after a little bit of time, um, the gates open to you. You are allowed to make your way through. Ooh, look at you guys going into high society. Uh, you guys find yourselves walking through onto palace grounds. Um, very beautiful, very beautiful. Um, sorry, I'm just kind of playing with my action figures here. I should focus. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, you make your way through, you find your way over to what is the larger palace where you will indeed see the good wizard um, sort of standing around. Uh, and he will approach you, Ethereth, and say, Ah, oh, my good friend, how are you doing? And he'll come over and shake your hand. Good to see you again. I apologize if you were expecting a response to your message sooner. Um, it would likely was sent to a ship that was burned down in the docks not that long ago. Oh, most unfortunate. I hope you've uh, uh, found a way to... Uh, I hope you're getting back on your feet all right. Oh, it's not a trouble at all. We just had to deal with... <laughs> would you believe it was Baphomet cultists? A whole cult. Baphomet cultists. Yes, oh, just... Well, 
Pisces was dealt with, goat, demon goat worship is dealt, killed, and we've now procured a new ship de named the Prophet's Demise, so we're back wow. in business for the most part. We're still in the process of filling out every position on the ship crew-wise, which is partly why I came to you, actually. I see. Well, very impressive you, you, to, to have lost a ship and procured another one so, so quickly. Uh, I, I, you, you must slake my curiosity uh, upon two matters. First, uh, what ship have you procured in, in the aftermath of such a, such a travesty? Uh, we've, I, dare I say, we've upgraded from our previous vessel. We ha now have a turtle. A turtle ship? My, that's, uh, that turtle ship has been sitting in the shipyards for years for that purchase. It's, uh, finally received an owner. Most impressive, most impressive. Uh, and secondly, um, you, you mind, you, you must, uh, must introduce me to your companion unless she is a servant. Um, no, this is, um, uh my trusted friend, crewmate, and the quartermaster of our ship, Bissan Isandro. Ah, quartermaster, I see. Well, good to meet you. I am Proconsul Gavrik Main. She will kind of like put her hand on put her hand on her sword the way you would to stabilize it and give her a little bow and yes, indeed. Well, Please walk with me uh, and tell me of your uh, the, the trivialities that uh, are getting in the way of your next adventures. Well, as I said, we're... new ship means needing a new crew, and while we have a sort of core membership of six, ships require more hands than that, and we find ourselves <laughs> lacking artillerists and i was thinking that perhaps there were some individuals you may have heard of that you think would be worth inquiring with hmm i could pause i of course i do not uh do too much time mingling amongst the rabble and the uh, uh and such uh i I could see what I might be able to scrounge up, uh, possibly. Uh, let me think here. Is anyone off the top of my head who might serve purpose as such? And he's going to kind of rub his my, beard a little bit. My thinking is that if a name reached the ears of those within the palace, then they must be someone worth, worth taking on as a crewmate. Indeed. Indeed. I, I can think of uh, one or two individuals who... Mm, well, truly, I can only think of one off the top of my head, as, as you imagine I don't deal with uh, crew members too much, but there is at least one uh, artillerist and siege engineer uh, of some note who has been out of work on the Rock of Brawl, who has drawn the attention of the court once or twice. Um, Kilora Brightbeam. She, she's a rock gnome, um, and she's considered to be uh, quite passionate about arcane artillery and magically enhanced siege engines. Uh, the palace had thought once or twice to commission her to try and uh, upgrade the armaments here on the rock. For all, uh, we had been considering such a thing, but, uh, well, uh, she, uh, she has turned us down. She seems to be more interested in being... Uh, uh, out on the astral sea than to actually be uh, tied down into any sort of port of call. So uh, I feel I feel comfortable telling you this information. You might be able to secure hers. Uh, uh, quite the quite the tinkerer, as gnomes often are. Uh, she sounds like someone who might who might prove to be well liked by our captain, who was quite the tinkerer himself. Yes, indeed, and. Uh, Artillerist, siege engineer, and uh, uh, arcane tinkerer. Quite the steel if you can find a way to procure her services. On the topic of services, I 
since I, your message didn't reach, well, your message did reach a ship, it certainly, the ship didn't exist anymore, so I wasn't able to discover the exact parameters of the job you wanted. And I wanted to inform you that I kind of like not looked at Bissan. Our ours is a crew that takes all kinds. It doesn't allow the barriers of one's birth to determine the value they bring to the crew. Mm. And so we have recently taken on a half scroll who has already proven herself to be a very well, a highly valued member of the crew. And so I suppose kind of lowers it <laughs> kind of lowers his voice, but then I don't know exactly what the post war stance the palace has on working scroll, though I know where she does possess a full pardon officially. Ah. Uh. Uh. What? <laughs> what do you think the palace's stance is on working with scrub? Ethereth. We wars over. <laughs> and, like, I don't know if post war figures really want to kill him or, like, man, we're going to have to really try and, like, move past this. Uh, I imagine, I, well, I ahead. mean, practically speaking, I imagine whichever one is the most likely to win public favor. Uh, maybe a little persuasion check. Yeah. Uh, 20. 20. So he kind of raises an eyebrow at you, uh, and then sort of smiles, uh, and says, you are a curious one, Etherith. You uh, you seem to know your way around the uh, politics more than I might have expected you to. Yes, indeed. Well, part of running such a place is to, of course, the people. Um, and right now, people don't much like the scroll. Uh, so we don't do business with the scroll. But I will say this. If you keep that to yourself, I would maybe keep this person, uh, maybe, maybe between uh, we and you, we have an understanding that I have no understanding that this individual is aboard your ship. Maybe we still oh. do business. Quite, I, I would honestly agree. I think that if, if I'm being totally honest, if you, well, the job you, when we met before, you describe the job as something you would rather wasn't it tied to you, and I can't imagine anyone ever suspecting you of working with a scroll. Could you? Of course, of course. And I can track you for discretionary purposes, regardless. So, Absolutely. as long as you keep your uh, crew member to your cells and not on palace grounds or in any meeting that would involve me, then we have no issue. Yeah, discretion is the condition, so we'll abide by this condition fully. Very good, very good. Then, let us proceed on to the matter of business, why don't we? It is rather fortuitous that you have a, a turtle ship. I, I had a job in mind for all of you uh, before, but frankly, with, the, if, with this new asset of yours, maybe I have something a little bit more a little bit of higher uh, importance to me if you'd be interested in something that might utilize the entire capabilities of your ship. Are you prepared to take on such uh, uh, something with a, on a, in a place of more hazardous space? Well, we'll have to recoup the purchase costs somehow, so of course we'd like to put the ship through its paces. <laughs> very good, very good. Well, as I had said before, uh, let me go double check all of my work in the ship uh, with this other contract and draw something up. And as we had spoken of before, I would very much like to meet your captain 
before we proceed with anything business between us. I would like to know the caliber of the man who runs your crew before I uh, before I resign myself, if you understand. Of course. Very well. Why don't we say, uh, it, as I repeat myself, uh, this individual of yours, this scroll, uh, remains aboard the ship, but you and Basson, whoever else you think it is of importance that I meet, and your captain most especially, uh, why don't we meet at the, uh, uh, where we first met for uh, our first meeting? Uh, why don't we uh, get some dinner at uh, the High City, uh, uh, well, the, let's, let, us, let us all meet at the Royal Theatre Company and have a, a night of enjoyable production. And then we can talk business afterward, once I get the sense of who you all are. I like to know who I'm in business with. Very well, I shall convey this to the captain. Very good, very good. We'll kind of give you like a pat on the shoulder. Um, he says, ah, and uh, Quartermaster Besson, it was a good pleasure to meet you as well. Pleasure to meet you. Right. Um, well, I have much to do. Good seeing you again. I'll see you tonight. And he will um, give a nod to like whatever guards are nearby, keeping an eye on things, and uh, you guys can proceed uh, back out of the palace. As we once we like left the palace and we're kind of like walking down the street by ourselves, Ethel will kind of say to the son. In truth, I'm loath to exclude Shaka from meetings, but... I don't like it either. But no one seems... No one seems to think about what it means to be half pro. She can't help how she was made. I agree. I mean... The half part, especially, I imagine there's something unspeakable there. I don't like the way people act, but we have to work, so. Well, let's see if we can't get this bright bean on board. Let's find a gnome. Okay, uh, I would like to travel back to our uh, prophet's demise. Um, is it what's going on with you three? Uh, what is uh, what, you guys are just kind of and frankly, you guys are probably not doing too much of the heavy lifting. Like the pox units are happy to do that work, and um, it's also grueling work to do a move. So why would you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what? Uh, so what? Uh, what are you guys up to as you're? aboard your new ship uh picking rooms maybe what's the plan yeah I'm saying I, yeah, yeah. Ed, ed's getting comfortable in the cap quarters kind of like getting to know the place got it well let's go look at your quarters and maybe this could be a little bit of a, a fun thing so your captain quarters are seven which means uh, you open this door here. Oh, let's bring that wall down a little bit. Perfect. So you find yourself in this room right here. You got a little window. Um, a hatch can be brought down to sort of secure it, like a shutter, essentially. But, um, yeah, you got a little room. I'd say the only real thing inside of here is like a cot and a chest um, to, like, keep your stuff in. Is there anything that you would do to make the place a little more, a little more Ed? Say Ed, um, yeah. Some, some of that like art that's in his artifice, artificery, like that'll probably chisel behind, uh, kind of like make the place more comfy than like Richard and uh, and then he'll let Otto do its thing. Otto kind of roost somewhat. Yeah, perfect. okay, put up some art. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, 
Oh, look at that. You got some art. <laughs> oh, man. It's bats, man. It's Halloween. Uh, and yeah, you leave Otto in here to kind of wheel around a little bit and have a good time. Very nice. Yeah, there's not too many smaller. Oh, a man of culture. Sorry, a genasi of culture. <laughs> Okay, yeah. And you look out your window, you, you're the, the proud owner of a new ship, my friend. That's not a bad feeling. Uh, okay, is there... So that's what you're up to. What about Chaplain? What about Slace? Yeah, I think uh, Chaplain would probably be, um, you know, just doing, I guess, kind of moving day type activities, right? He's... Uh, you know, he he tends to kind of clomp along uh, beside or behind the autonom or the uh, AP units to make sure that they're doing what, um, or that they understand what they're being asked to do. Um, and, you know, he's also in the process of moving things out of the basement of his uh, club to the ship. So there's going to be a little straightening on both ends of that. And then at the same time, he's also the bull bosun of a great big brand new ship. So um, he's going to be taking a lot of time, uh, you know, at, may, probably during the process of moving, because I imagine he's relatively easily distracted um, to look <laughs> around the ship, to look around the shipping and kind of get, uh, you know, an idea of like the structure and the, the means of construction and like, you um, you know, weak points, strong points, that kind of thing. Um, you know, I maybe even down to something um, as as uh, esoteric as like you know the the type of riveting or whatever. Um, and then aside, you know, in addition to that, I imagine that if there does seem to be a place uh, fit for a med bay, um, he'll probably be wanting to bring in oh that's something that he would like to do um if he could uh acquire some extra materials um for uh, like that he uses in his uh medicine kit in his healing kit um, oh, okay he might he might want to store extras of those on board in the med bay uh because he tends to use those in combat and need to refill every time they make a stop so maybe he'd probably you know try and get together a little bit of a store of those on board the ship yeah absolutely um uh if you have the coin you can absolutely purchase extra healer kits and stash them in your uh your med bay your med bay is equipped with like uh, essentially like a stool and like a cot um something to like you know the basic necessities to like have people in there, but as far as like metal, medical equipment goes, you'll need to uh, wrangle up those purchases. Uh, sure, but... and as, at some point we'll probably want more comfortable, like actual like medical beds, right? He He's seen, I mean, they were all in the med bay that the, uh, what were they, Gith Yankee? Yeah. Um, had, and that was, um, you know, that seemed fairly, like, comfortable and effective and efficient. So he's probably going to try and, and model um, the improvements uh, somewhat in that direction just because it's a look, seemed like a successful model that he's seen before. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, you can absolutely do that. It's well lit in here, uh, as a note. Uh, so performing any sort of surgeries or whatever won't require... Uh, like, obviously, it's always good to have extra, extra light, but it is already a very well-lit room. Uh, and you will certainly can do this. Uh, get yourself right. prepped with what you need. And as um, Bisson pointed out, we're pretty broke, so we don't have the means to, like, uh, equip this out right now. But I will at least purchase one um, additional uh, healing kit and make those supplies available uh, in the med bay. All right, absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, no problem. Yeah, I'll continue to uh, decorate the place and make it look uh, up to snuff. Um, yeah, we'll see. They'll probably just like, 
that's hard to get people up and down from there. So, but yeah, it's got lots of shelves and lots of places to store medical equipment. And when you have the means to uh, purchase extra healers gear, you certainly can. And that can be ready to go for anyone who needs it. Um, but yeah, you spent some time in there, getting it ready to go. Uh, thinking of all of the bones you're going to uncrack and all the skin you're going to unslice. Right. <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, I, think, I think he also, someone had mentioned that they're, you know, somewhere aboard this big ship now. Um, if we could, and if this has to involve, uh, I'm sure it will involve to some degree some cooperation. So he'd maybe get together with, uh, consult with Zalace and, and uh, Ed. Um, but a designated place for the AP units when they're powered down and and maybe make himself, um, you know, a small space as well for his uh, Sentinel's rest um, so that they have, you know, since they won't be needing rooms and cots and beds, but so that they have kind of like a, a quiet, secure, out-of-the-way place uh, to put themselves so that they're not in the way Uh when they're when they're not being used yeah and there are a couple of places you can do um i would say uh there's a couple of places um uh, or you know actually huh, well i'll get to that in a second um you can put them in the cargo hold but there's also that like secondary place up top here and in fairness um, it is closest to the siege weapons. So if they're like powered down or not working or whatever, yeah. that would be the, they would be like ready to go to go do like get armed on the siege engines. So you could try and turn this place into a bit of like a poxy storage. Like one of its purposes could be just like a place for the poxy units to kind of hang out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I almost thought maybe oh, if thought... we had um, either like clamps or straps or something no, maybe not straps but like clamps to secure ourselves or even partitions between like the individual units yeah and you know what maybe maybe something in your little auto gnome brain begins to itch you've had you have quite a few um you know uh construct based humanoids aboard this ship like maybe Maybe you constructs need like a place where you can do constructs stuff. Maybe you need a place where you can like, like lounge out and be like happy constructs. And these apoxy units are kind of dry and like, you know that they're capable of learning and becoming more. Um, I think a lot of them move a little bit more like daintily, a little more gracefully now, now that they've been yeah. forced to dance so much that they're like, they don't move like robots anymore. They kind of like almost move like almost a little goofy. Like they kind of have walk like very like as if they're like a dancer able to go on stage. Um, <laughs> now they've got a little too much grace and a little too much sway in the shoulders. Um, like, it, like it's like watching a human try to be like an elf. Um, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little goofy, uh, which maybe, uh, which maybe makes Kaplan happy. But hey, who knows? Maybe that's what the purpose of this place is to make it a sort of construct century, like little hangout spot, whatever. Nice. Who knows? Yeah. I like it. A bar that only serves oil. Who knows? <laughs> um, but yeah, you start getting some ideas. Uh, what about uh, what about you, Zalace? What are you What are you getting up to? So, um, I'll um, well, first I'll be on the ballistas checking them out. Uh, starting to fit the um, quadrage um, so that we've got that on we've got one of them so we'll put that on one I think we've got one haven't we it is just one yeah uh, <clears throat> so I'll put that on the main one in the middle um, and then just make sure the rest are all sorted out um, and then I'm, if there's a little room is there a little room by that entrance where they, the ballistas are? Um, unfortunately not. As I said, the main entrance to get to them is on the second floor. So you have to like go up the, the handles, get to the second floor, and then move out here. So this is the room uh, closest. Um, all the other crew quarters are there. But as a quick fun note I'll give to you, Ed, you are 
you know, you're moving into the captain's quarters. But over here is considered the Spelljammer's quarters. And you are both captain and Spelljammer, so if you wished you could move into the big room, uh, if you wanted, that would be fitting of both your uh, ah. role on the ship and your, your, your rank on the ship, if you wish. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll probably, like, uh, put some of the workshop stuff there if I can. Like, I mean, something that I can. I don't know. Like, uh, because we have, uh, we have a, uh, Smithings tools and, um, another thing that we were carrying over from the other ship to this right. spot. That, um, because I know well, we have that a... big open space, but. Yeah. And hey, that's a thing. Maybe you want to turn this place into a workshop. It would have to be very tidy, though, because, like, your They're pathway... Personal. Yeah, your pathway from, like, the crew quarters to the bridge goes through the Spelljammer's quarters. So if there's, like, gear and shit laying around everywhere, like, that's gonna uh, get... Okay, never mind. That's actually... Um, I'll probably... That, that could be, like, a good, um, um, like, uh, ready to get into action sort of mode if it's close to the bridge. Like a place to store the fish suit, say if someone's got to jump out, maybe like uh, some arms, you know, something like that. Yeah. Probably well, it that. works excellent for, because here's the thing, the only people who need to be on the bridge are like essential crew members and not right. artillerists. So at, if you were like living in here as the spell yeah. jammer, like, that means yeah. that, like, oh, if something happens, you can immediately just walk onto the bridge and be ready to go. Perfect. Um, so it is a good positioning for for yeah. you. And then anybody who's crewed back here is probably heading upstairs for the artillery anyway. Um, Perfect. So maybe that just becomes your room, and you just you just settle in there. Heck yeah. No, yeah, I like that. That 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 that'd be great. Kind of reminds me of the Mass Effect layout. Yeah, a little bit. There you go. Um, very cool. Very cool. So you move in there. And then you could find another use for the captain, the the captain's quarters. Maybe that becomes something like a meeting else. room or something. Like that. Yeah. Room. Well, you guys got the mess room, so you can. I don't know. Hey, you got you got the floor plan. It's up to you guys what you want to do with it. You guys are making good use of your space. Um, fantastic. Uh, sorry, Zelice. Uh, circling back to you. I uh, just wanted to get that out of the way. Oh, but, no, uh, there wasn't much else. I was just going to try and find somewhere to hang a hammock it's close to the ballistas, but um, yeah. I don't want to take any space from the um, the droid-only part of the ship, so that's fine. Absolutely. Well, you. the good news is that you can be the first one to pick your bunk, because Ed's got to have a nice room, because he's the spell jammer and the captain. Chaplain doesn't need a room and never has used a room, which means that you, my friend, are the first person aboard the ship who needs a bunk, so you can take your pick of the one you like. But there, there's a single room, isn't there? Uh, like, there is that room that was supposed to serve as the captain's room. You could just kind of like... Oh, I think I'll move my stuff in there then. So <laughs> can... Fair enough. You like open the door, you, you know the captain isn't going to use it, you just like hop on the one of the two very nice beds uh, in here, and uh, yeah, claim the place for yourself. Very funny. Uh, okay, fantastic. Uh, is there anything else that you guys in particular want to talk about or do aboard the ship, or should we circle back to our uh, recruitment team? No, I'm good. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, okay, so where do you guys head? You two. Um, if I was a budding rock gnome tinkerer, siege master, where would I be? Uh, I guess I'm gonna make some inquiries at, like, I know the local watering hole where the sailors hang out. <laughs> Okay, you just pick the nearest watering hole and make some inquiries? Yep. Um, okay. Probably not in the high city, I assume? No. No, so let's say you the first place you pass by is the edge. Um, 
you make your way into the edge. You go to make some inquiries. I will say that you do see, like, and you guys have seen this around uh, here and there, but I'll, I'll give you the detailing now. You see that there is, like, some captain or some some first mate or quartermaster of a new vessel who's got, like, a table at the back, and you see sailors lining up um, to, like, try and get crew to board a ship, and maybe there's maybe they get, like, one or two people, and they're, like, waiting for people to come over and get crewed over, but very, like, um, Mr. Gibbs in Pirates of the Caribbean, yeah, yeah, the second yeah. movie... Uh, and that and that's kind of what people do. They just kind of set up shop somewhere, and and hopefully crew comes to them, uh, or you can actively seek out individuals. Um, but yeah, you go around, you make some inquiries. Uh, why don't you make me a either a persuasion or investigation check, uh, either of you, to try and track this gnome down? Okay, well said. <laughs> and that one on persuasion for a nine, so I hope you could do better than me. <laughs> it's a nat 20 for investigation. But I think it's going to be a 21 when it grows up. Wait, actually, what did I say? That's a different character. This is smarter. Where's investigation? As a plus three. Uh, natural 24, 23. Wow. So we, we both hit the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, Ethrit. So here's what I'm gonna say. You're like, you're doing everything you can, doing what you know, and you're talking to people, and it's to no fault of your own, you're just talking to people who just don't know. And you're like, you're going in there and being and being very charismatic, like, oh hey, can I buy you a drink? And like, oh, like the siege engines. You know what? I've been looking for someone with a good arcane skill. Like, do you know, like you know anyone around like that? I've heard they've been advancing and people are like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. And you just start finding the wrong people. And Basan just like, by pure just like flip of the coin luck, sits down and goes like, hey, you, have you heard of a gnome called Brightbeam? And it's like, oh yeah, it hangs out at the, uh, that new, uh, that new gnome comedy club. Uh, the, <laughs> the, 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 the bad medicine or the best medicine or something like that. Um, yeah, I know she hangs out around there. Uh, so by pure luck, flip of the coin, uh, the son just happens to talk to the first person who knew. Etherith, you like come back. You've talked to like ten people. And you're like, oh, fuck. I'm having. I'm really struggling here, the son. I'm hoping that a better luck. <laughs> I think we need the best medicine. Right. She's gonna be there. That's where she goes. Well, that's mighty convenient, and... It is. We can get her. Hopefully she laughs. And four non-dicks. Plus, if she is someone who goes to the best medicine, she must be at least somewhat willing to tolerate it. Now look around at the ash. And she might know other people. Exactly. Yes, similarly exactly. Inclined. Let's ask Chaplin to throw a party. And Shaka can cook horty whores. It's it's an elven word. I've only seen it, but they had it at fancy parties. And they're like little eat things. Sounds I like will say you can also just go to the best medicine and try and recruit this individual. <laughs> Just, just to maybe save us a little time. I mean, if, if, if she's there now, I mean, I'll just, just grab her while we can. Here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna chat. Off we go. Club. Off we go. For you go a to the chaplain's. Yep, you go to chaplain's club, where always a place to hear, you know, a laugh and a giggle. Um, you open the door. Neely's like, like very mad scientist esque has like what looks like a Moscow mule and two vials. One's like full of some weird bubbling green liquid and one's some bubbling red liquid. He goes, Oh like, no, you can't do that. As a, as a recent, <laughs> as a recent graduate of alchemy, I'm like, Oh no, no, no. You can't put those together. <laughs> uh, and then he like puts them together and it goes, <laughs> Oh, there we go. There, there it is. Uh, and you're like, <laughs> and, but you, you who has been working in alchemy is like, yeah, those shouldn't go together. What the fuck? And he goes, uh, and he goes, oh, a student of medicine. You're absolutely right. If I were to combine these out in an oxidized space, uh, they would have surely exploded and probably killed me. But alcohol does delude. 
uh, their explosive effects and simply gives it a little sparkly thing. And you see it's like literally making like little fireworks out of the top as it like bubbles and does little fireworks. I like look uh, at the barber like, what strength alcohol are we serving here to achieve this? It's all poison, don't worry about it. Uh, uh, I'm just going to set that aside for a moment. Uh, well, how are you two pass. doing? How are you guys doing? What can I do for you? We're actually hoping that a little rock gnome happened to pass through. Or perhaps they're still here. But uh, well, we've only got one rock gnome in today. Uh, uh, just wait. the uh, just the last over there. Uh, and he'll point out, uh, sitting at the front, someone, uh, some plasmoid's like, and everyone's like, ha, 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 ha. Uh, and sitting at the front, you see this, uh, ooh, give me a second here, I just want to make sure I'm getting my physical descriptions correct. Um, you see this uh, tanny-skinned, uh, black-haired, pulled back into like a messy bun, Actually, no, she's got her hair down today. Um, you see this, like, gnomish girl. She's got, like, a little bit of, like, a little... Just, like, the tiniest little pot belly. Like, it's almost, like, kind of cute. And she's just, like, sitting at the front, and she's got one of these, like, crazy, whimsical, mealy drinks. Um, she's got long black hair that kind of flows down her back. Uh, she's got her hair up today. Uh, and she's just, like, got the most, like, gregarious, like, smiley look on her face. And she's just like, ha <laughs> <laughs> like laughing, like hanging out with a couple of individuals. You don't know if they're friends or people she just met today, uh, but is, is very much enjoying the atmosphere and having a drink and having a good time. I uh, wander over and they, uh, hello there. Are you appear to be enjoying yourself. Oh, of course I am. Uh, come have a, have a seat, friend. Uh, who are you? I'm Etherith. I'm part of the Prophet's Demise, and I am a, well, I'm a, well, in the same crew as the owner of this place, the, uh, Ordinary Chaplain. Oh, you know the owner! Oh, well, you've got to let him know for me that, uh, you know, compliments to the, uh, Comedy Wrangler, that you're really enjoying this place. Always, it's also nice to finally find somewhere that, that pays Narrow Glitter Gold the, the respect he's due. And she sort of like gestures, like almost like raises a cup to like what I imagine is like a small little like shrine of Narrow Glitter Gold, like almost like an, like an image at an altar. And Narl's like, like just some like ridiculous pose in the picture. I imagine Chapel might have had commission. Yeah, just like finger gunning or something. Oh, you would you like to meet him? Narrow Glitter Gold, of course I would. No, uh, the the owner of the establishment, the auto oh, gnome. He's an auto gnome. Sure. His name is is a uh, chaplain. Uh, I, we should invite sure. him to the turtle ship. We absolutely have been. I, <laughs> I must say, um, I would want I, to I, like. I gotta, I actually, I gotta. I get. I'm a little in my drinks right now. I gotta roll, pull back a little. This is sounding very white vanny right here. I mean, I, who uh, are you people? So, oh, I mean, we could. I mean, you just walked up to me and you're like, uh, candy. In the truth be told, we're in need of crew members, and um, if I'm, a, if I'm crappy if I'm wrong, but you are, um, Kalara Brightbean, yes. Oh, y yes, I, I am. We, um, of the Prophet's Demise, are in need of artillerists, and you were recommended, and by sheer good fortune, you happen to be here in a place that is owned by one of my, by a trusted friend and crewmate, so our invitation to meet the, uh, you know, meet the owner is also a potential job offer if you're looking for work i uh sure um i i i okay uh make me a persuasion check please D, D beyond just be kind to me you've been screwing me over for like three weeks straight and you're gonna keep doing it for a 10. <laughs> and she goes uh 
sure. Uh, well, this is his club. I'll be here for the next couple hours. Feel free to send him by to say hi. Strangers who I just met now. That I will take that. I'll go fetch him. Uh, I can look to Pisana as soon as possible, yes? Let's go fetch him now. Okay. Go fetch him now. Bye. And she like turns and she's like, like immediately starts like, I like, uh, I, I look to the, 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 the like the part to be like, make sure she's entertained. Don't keep her happy. Got it. And, and make sure she knows we're not creepers. <laughs> well, <laughs> too late. <laughs> Why? What did you say to her? We offered her a job. Oh. Okay. Don't know why she would be feeling creeped out then. Yeah, me neither. Anyway. Okay. All just fail chaplains to acquire. In in fairness, I was sitting here as the DM, like like I kinda like have like an out of body experience as that gnome where I was like, hang on, she's sitting here like a little in her cups, and two kind of really shady looking individuals just showed up and were like, hey. You want to meet the owner? Come hang out on our <laughs> ship with us, person. Don't worry about what our names are. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's it's literally every Friday and Saturday night everywhere for every American woman. Exactly. That's exactly yeah. what just happened. Yep. Come hang out on our ship and meet the owner. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly jumping on that. It's, it's, That's on us. Um, okay. Hey. But if you guys, as, as a as a, a balm to your to your setback, you want to see a picture of her that I just found? Sure. Boom! Roll twenty. Oh, only one of you rolled. Oh hell yeah! I could I could post it in the. Uh... Yeah, put it in the chat. I'll no get way. I'll get in roll twenty. Nah, I'll put it in the Facebook chat. Dang, got the goggles and everything. Under stat block and was like, ah, oh, perfect. Oh, what a cutie! Oh, she's a doll. She's a cutie patootie. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so to expedite things, you guys go back to the ship. You find Chaplin. Chaplin, you want to go back? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You guys show up again, maybe like half an hour later, um, hustling, and you find her. Oh, hello there. Um... My friends oh, here, they were my kidding! Friends. No, <laughs> no, they weren't kidding. They, uh, they really are. Uh, my friends and, and shipmates. And yes, we actually, I'm sorry, we're a little desperate. Well, not desperate really, but we have a new, we have a new ship. And it's quite big. And we ha we don't have the crew with us to, to man it properly just yet. And we're just excited to get started. It's going to be a grand adventure. And uh, in order to do that, we need to find some people who are capable of uh, of helping us out. So my friends heard your name. They were a little excited to get to you, and um, they found they were lucky enough to find you here, and they got excited. But anyway, uh, I hope you're enjoying the club, and um, if you're interested uh, in a position aboard a very new uh, turtle ship. Uh, we'd be a happy to talk ship. about that with you. Oh, yes. Oh, it is grand. It's, first of all, it is massive. I'm setting up a med bay. There's going to be a little tinkering area. I, I always wanted to work. I mean, I'm more of an artillerist person. I more like to work with siege weaponry, but like, I mean, we have siege as a tinkerer. Weapons. We have a oh. mangonel and, and three ballistas. A mangonel and three ballistas, right? Oh, I, I, you guys have all this space for siege weaponry, right? Yes, and our captain is an artificer, and he tinkers a lot. And there's a tinkering space, I think. Isn't there a tinkering space, Chaplain? I don't remember, but I think there's a tinkering space. There is. There's a tinkering space. Also, uh, you might be interested to know. Have you heard of the uh, the quatridge, the uh, mechanism that can be used to load multiple... Yeah, I... Yeah, I, I I haven't had a chance to, to be aboard any ships, but you know I, I you know flance around the crew yards and I took a look we at it. We have three. That was that was very... invented by the that was invented by the captain of our ship. So uh, we really have, 
Mm-hmm. Yes, oh, absolutely. For Rick, that's actually a good note to point out, is, is that your ship would come pre-equipped with quadrages because you purchased it from the shipyard, because that's what he... That's what the deal was. He's like, I want them, and I'm going to equip all of my siege... Balli- I'm going to equip all my ballistas with quadrages and get an extra chunk of money out of that. So keep that in mind. You guys are... Um, you guys are getting pre-equipped with quadrages. Uh, and he goes, that's a good... This, this almost sounds too good to be true. What's the catch? Uh, there's really no catch. Oh, there is a little bit of a catch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> our, our intention um, is to do some, you know, really far out and amazing things that a lot of other uh, crews aren't capable of. This is no normal uh, cargo running ship. Uh, we're adventurers, and we intend to take on some very challenging adventures. Sometimes it's dangerous. Oh, well, I, I would hope it's dangerous. I mean, how else are you supposed to test out your siege weaponry? But sometimes people die. Oh, I know that. That's, I've been on plenty of ships. That's that's a catch. That um, Well, if, if that's the only catch, I mean, we're... That's that's pretty much every spell jammer ship from the the sun to the outer world. So that really that's... is the only catch. We've been very successful so far. This I was able to buy this club uh, just in the past few months uh, with the profits that we've made from the ship, and we were able to save the Kindori. And they you're, oh, you guys are the crew that did the that saved the Kindori. That was us. We are. We'll buy glitter gold's bottom. Sign me up. All right, it'll be great to have you aboard. Uh, and she'll she'll buy you guys around and be like, uh, and get a drink and buy you guys some crazy drinks and be like, sorry, I thought you guys were like, you know, creepy weirdos, but you know, you're both very spooky looking. I hope you un- I hope you don't. I don't like. Lisan will take her her veil off and say. I'm used to people being scared. It's okay. Right. Well, it's not so much that, just like, you know, you know, a girl like me has to watch out for, for, you know, people around bars. All girls need Everyone to Everyone wants a piece of this. <laughs> she does a little dance. <laughs> it's true. I can assure hey. you I have no interest. Oh. <laughs> Don't, don't, uh, don't take that personal. It was not meant. It, I, it's too late. Not. I did already. Oh. <laughs> Bison, no, Bison and Etherith, um, you're more than welcome to uh, set up here in the club and, and uh, you know, interview anyone interested if you want to do that here. We were I mean, planning to actually do a little recruitment drive here since I would at least hope that most patrons of this place would be more tolerant of our hiring practices. I would think so, and probably a little bit better uh, like better humored. I, I would imagine that uh, you know, anybody coming in here probably isn't uh, somebody that's too difficult to get along with, I would imagine. Exactly. Alright. Uh, so as you guys, cheers to your to your first of six recruits you need to make today um let's take our break as we have uh, reached our two hour mark and when we come back we are going to skip to the part where you guys get a number of recruits and you guys will pick between those recruits because that maybe took a little longer than it needed to <laughs> uh but we'll be we'll get back to it uh as soon as we get back five ten minutes or uh, 10 15 minutes we'll be right back
I am just going through uh, the 24 one mm -hmm. and making a new one up. Um, the only things that I've come across at the moment that I can't find um, is I, stupid things like normal crossbow bolts. The only ones that they have are the Wallachian ones. Oh, yeah. I, mean, you, you, I think they work exactly the same, so feel free to just... Yeah, because with the Wallachian ones, you can knock people prone. I think with that is where the normal crossbow bolts you don't. So. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. But when you when you put it in the inventory, mm -hmm. um, it just comes up crossbow bolts walloping, not, not just a normal one. But they come on the legacy one, so if you're going on the 24, it won't come up on that, will it? Yeah, as far as equipment goes, like, yeah, I don't care about the legacy stuff when it comes to equipment, so feel, feel free on that. Uh, and the only other thing that I couldn't find was, um, I've got goggles of night, which I couldn't find, so I didn't know whether you'd have to make them and put them in. Whether I'm... Do they not appear in your... Like, do they not... Do they... Damn, that's, that's crazy. They just don't... Appear for 2024. Um... Is your character sheet in the uh, in the campaign? Yeah, I'll put it in. Uh, yeah, that new one that you sent over. It's in that one. Oh, let me take a look. I'm just going through it now. It's I've put the latest twenty four on, so you know. Because that could be it. That... A copy of your sheet, it hasn't been added to the campaign. Oh, here we are. Okay, yeah, it was in there, yep. I'm going to go to the... Damn, really? They suck. Wizards of the Coast sucks. Oh, here we go. There we go. Okay, refresh it and give it a shot. There's a there was a filter in your character preferences that needed to be clicked on. Uh, so give it a refresh and it should show up, or at, le at least be able to be added from the. Uh... Yeah, because I don't know yeah. if that, just the items that I was going through, just to make sure. Cool. But then I'll, okay. I'll let you know when it's done. You can just have a quick squiz over it and. Sweet, yeah. Book of the Stygian Bat. That's a way cooler name for the item. That's what I thought about. It does exactly the same thing because I read them both just to make yeah. sure. Fair enough. But yeah, hit the refresh button. I added the Goggle of Knights to your inventory. There was like a. You had to like flip on a legacy thing to uh, make it work. Um, but yeah, it should be in there. <laughs> um, so you should be able to have full access to all of your previous events for you. Yeah, I'll go through all and then I'll then um, just let you works. know. Sweet. <laughs> we'll get started when everyone's back. Hey, Stephanie, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm okay. I was just, uh, I was at a show. And there was an extra hundred bucks in my pocket if I didn't come back right away, so I went for the extra hundred bucks. Oh, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a really good show. It was actually my best show of the year. Which is funny because there were less than a hundred attendees. That's good.
We'll get back to it when we have our Dragonborn back. We got our Ethmus. Oh, there we are. Okay, we're all back. Cool. I have been summoned. I have been summoned. Okay, guys. So, um, all of you, and by all of you, I mean Basson, Etherith, and Chaplin set up a little station at the comedy club. Uh, word gets around throughout the day. So this won't be like a full day ordeal, but I'm going to go through um, some individuals who come up to you who are excited to be hired. I assume you kind of like put something out on the desk that says it's like the former crew of the Dawn's Return, saver of the saviors of the Kindori. Like you kind of like put your resume down for what kind of crew they're signing up with. Yep. For those who can read. Uh, okay. So, all right, here we go. Um, you get a number of individuals, uh, uh, who come up to you who are just like loyal, just like regular crew people. Um, let, let me ask you guys, how much detail do we want from each one? Like, do we want, do you want like a, a short interview from each one? I think general overview should be fine. Overview. Okay, so there's a little line that forms, um, and, and first guy comes up. He's a human, um, or sorry, uh, this is yeah. Uh, there's a he's a human. He goes, uh, "Hello, my name is Joris Swiftwin. Uh, I've been a sailor and a deckhand for a long time. Uh, um, uh, I like to think I'm sharp-witted, and I've got a strong sense of what's right." I love, I love the crew on your ship. So that's Jorah Swift Fist. Excuse me. Uh, big bulky individual. Uh, next one comes up. You see this uh, half elf. Um, um, he's a little, a little dainty looking, but you can see he's got like rough sort of carpenter's hands. He goes, oh, yeah, I worked. Uh, she goes, I've, I've worked as a carpenter for. Uh, on many ships, worked on various ship hulls. I'd be very excited to work on something made of metal. I mean, I'm more of a carpenter type, but I could do any work. You don't need to worry about that. I mean, your ship's metal, but there's still some wood, right? <laughs> and he, you know, he's carpentry type. Um, this sort of little halfling comes up and says, Oh, I've been a... Uh, I'm Risa Stormbrace. Um, you know, uh, I'd like to... Uh, you know, I, I, I've been a cook, I've been a quartermaster, I've served a number of roles. I'm just, I'm just looking to get hired to get by right now, you know, and whatever, whatever wherever you want to put me, I'm, I'm happy to be put. Um, we're going to skip that one. Um, another human comes up, he goes, uh, I, I'm, uh, oh, no, this is a, this is a her. She goes, I am a, I'm, I'm Lyra Ravenshade. Uh, I've, I've been a sailor for a long time. I've served as a sort of a medic's hand here and there. Um, I've learned arts and medicines from various merchants, but you know I'm uh, I, I'm happy to to just just help out however I can. Uh, if there's a place alongside whatever your medic is, I always always like to help out in that sense. Um, and those are the sailors. Those are just like the flat, non-specialized sailors who come up to you today. Um, that was one. That was four individuals. You want to hire them? Sure. I was going to say, if there's only four, we need four. <laughs> Very, Very, almost exactly uh, the second Pirates movie, where it's like, how many have we got? And he's like, including that four? Four. Um, <laughs> so you guys, hi, he comes up and goes like, welcome aboard, welcome aboard, each one of them uh, as they come up. Um, uh, it takes a little longer for these guys to come out of the woodworks. Um, but you're going to get a number of individuals. I'm going to, I'm going to go over the ones that are a little like outside of what you're wanting. Um, an individual, uh, known as, uh, this elven, uh, this elven male comes out and he says, uh, ahoy, I'm, uh, Captain Aaron Thornfield, formerly Captain. Um, my ship got, uh. You know, I've, I've sailed across the stars and guided ships across the stars and protected merchant vessels and such. And 
got a deep respect for captains who aim to make the universe a better place. So I like what you've all been doing out there. Um, I lost my ship on a rescue mission a while back uh, and found myself sailing a little low. But if you need a navigator or a helmsman, a spell jammer, I'd be more than happy to serve. Um, so that individual as like a spell jammer pilot and a navigator um, comes forward. Um, these guys are really cool. I'm going to say best for last. Another helmsman, a human. Goes, I'm uh, Silas Greentide. Um, you know, I've got a real uh, tragic past, but uh, listen, I can serve well. Uh, I know my way around uh, Spelljammer Helm. I, I made the uh, the Thessal run in five seconds. In fairness, it's not too fast, but uh, you know, I can serve well. Um, I hate slavers. Fucking hate slavers. If you're fighting slavers, I'll fight alongside you with every bone in my body to my last breath. Um, is what he says. Um, this hulking Goliath comes up to you and says, uh, and says, Oi, I'm a Renor Sky Shield. I, uh, you know, I usually serve aboard on ships as a sort of, uh, more of a, a warrior for, like, boarding parties and such. I caught a, I'm really into a tier, a god of honor and justice. And, uh, listen, um, it's a little bit of a, a different coin of speciality, but I specialize in just beating the shit out of folks. So if you need someone with a strong arm who knows how to board a ship, right? Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I've, I'm so specialized in boarding ships and uh, taking guys out. So let me know if you want uh, someone who can uh, bring a little weight to your party. You know. Um, he comes forward. Um. Uh, there's a couple more, but I think I'm going to leave it at that for now. Um, and I'll let you guys decide later if you want to hear about other specialized individuals unrelated to artifice or uh, artillery you want to hear about. But in the meantime, you do get a couple of artillerists who come up to you, and you'll have to pick from them. The first one is a dwarf, a gold dwarf at that. So he's, you know, very classical looking dwarf, big beard, sort of like the, the uh, gilded in various ways in his armor. Um, He's got a tool belt on his side. He goes, goes, good to meet you. My name is uh, Belnor Ironbow. Um, the Iron Bows have been. Uh... Oh shit! Hang on a second. Uh, I'm led to believe that you had a, an old quartermaster that you let go of, right? You might, you might, what was his name? Um, uh... Could you guys tell me what, what his name? Just, I don't remember Axe. his name is. Doran Axebeard. Doran Axebeard. Axebeard. He goes, my he goes, my clan, the Iron Bows have. Uh, uh, we've always had a bit of a tiff with his clan. We all we have a feud that goes on for centuries. So, if uh, if your crew weren't good enough for him, it would be good enough for the Iron Bows. And uh, if I may say so. I am an expert in weapon specialities and siege engineering. I've uh, been doing so for a good long time. I specialize in ballistas and catapults. You don't see catapults on ships very often. They favor mangonels, but a uh, proud defender of those things. I am a... Uh, my, my, my loyalty is easily found in a captain who respects firepower and the powers of defensive aggression, shall we say. And considering you've purchased yourself a turtle ship, I'm sure we'd get along just fine. So that is Belnar Ironbow. Um, and a rather strange creature comes up to you that you haven't seen on the Rock of Brawl before. Um, blue skin, a number of sort of like, doesn't, has some hair, but has like a number of like fins across their body, slightly webbed hands. You see a Triton uh, approach your ship. Um, he goes, uh, uh, I'm gonna slightly change because I, I got a vision of mine. You see that she has like um, she's she's pretty strong looking. Like she can hold her own. She has thick hair that comes back into a single very long braid that goes right past her hips. Um, but she does have like the aquatic looking eyes. There's something a little bit intense about her. But she's she's actually very pretty. Um, she says, "I'm Teresa Vesh, but many call me Try. Uh, many call me Tidewalker. I." 
come from the seas of Carpi, uh, one of the many planets in realm space. I specialize in marine, um, I specialize in obviously the use of uh, spell jammers in a marine setting, and I also operate siege weaponry in such spaces and know how to equip them for uh, marine settings. Um, what else can I tell you? I'm at home at both in space and in the water, and I specialize in defending ships from boarding actions, especially in aquatic settings. Um, if you hope, I hope you don't mind me saying, um, the idea of serving aboard a turtle ship has always been a dream of mine. Um, there are very few ships that can function underwater quite as well as they can, and that is where my specialty lies. So if you were interested, I'd be very happy in joining your crew. Um, I like to think of myself as an individual who appears to a strong code of honor and um, would be honored to serve aboard your ship and hopefully make your siege weaponry a little bit more uh, uh, suited for those unique terrains. Uh, and I think that is the two you have to pick from other than the one you've already picked up. Oh, we gotta so take got the water. Eh? Yeah, I think he's going. Oh. So it's either like, the dwarf or the triton. I don't know anything about water. I don't even know. I don't even know how well Ed can swim. <laughs> That's why like he can make like a sun, sun cannons for us. That's a no-brainer here. Yeah, I can imagine someone flooding would be a suitable choice. And even. Maybe the second spell jammer. Oh, I don't know how the elf will, the elf captain would sit, but um, I think he's most probably another good bet. But then you kind of like the big guy, you know, like just like a universal big guy. Wow. What do we think about that? Like I don't know, like even guy. Definitely the water artillerist should be the yeah. top. For sure. Yeah. And I like where your head's at of getting another spell jammer. I uh I was thinking of teaching someone else how to spell jam, but like if if that elf kind of knows it, he kinda seems like he's run like some shit happened to him now. So I'm kinda curious about that. Well, he's he'll fit in, he's lost the ship, so I mean, you yeah. know, we can pair him by one more, so it's not a problem. And theoretically, we could take the elf, the big guy, and the artillerist. Just gotta pay these folks. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay them from our, our Hosian money. I mean, the thing yeah. is, the, um, there's, the, what, there was one that was a, a medicine. So, I mean, that frees Chaplin up a little bit as well. So, I mean, there's a couple that can do a wheel on the ship, depending on what we're doing. Yeah, because that that's the other thing I want I, I uh I'd love for, for future ship battles for like Etheriff to be free, for Chaplin to be free. Heck, even even our artillerist to sign like for all of us to be free, so I'll be I uh yeah. I say water artillerist girl. Um and what wh who are we thinking for number two? Like priority wise, I guess. No. I think well, definitely a spell jammer, but I think, I mean, for me, if it was voting wise, I'd say the L spell jammer captain. Have we already hired above the table? Have we already hired the rock gnome? I assume so. Yeah. You seem pretty pretty into that. Like, as so we're assuming that she's already hired, and everybody that we're adding is in addition to her, correct? Yes. Thank you. And we needed a second artillery, so yeah. that, uh, exactly. that, that, that was for sure. We do need another spell jam. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because otherwise we're going to be sat. So, that in so, the so let's, take, yeah. let's take the artillery lady, the elf guy, and let's talk to the big guy, just see where it's at. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna take some quick notes here, just to like start keeping track of uh, your hires. Um, they will all ask for three gold a day, uh, of who you have already hired. 
we're actually, um, yeah, they're specialized. I would say they ask for free gold a day. So uh, I'm just going to write them down. So where? Okay. Alara Bright Beam. And uh, just as a little fun tippet, I posted art of your Triton um, that you're thinking of hiring, uh, Tressa, uh, Tressa Vesh. So a little art in the Facebook chat if you want to take a look. Um, you're going to hire the former captain. Uh, where'd you go? Where'd you go, captain? Uh, the only thing with it, the elf captain is, <clears throat> is he going to be okay with Shaka? That's true. Um, I do have a couple of other individuals who would be willing to be hired by you all if you want to hear from more uh, specialized individuals uh, before you make a decision, if you care to. If not, that's okay as well. Not I, uh, for um, one thing I just want to know is, A, how many we can take with us with the new ship, and also uh, the money we haven't collected from our ocean friend. Just because, like, those are probably, you know, you can offer a quick little advance. That could show some good faith. You've got a lot of space aboard your ship. Um, especially, I know Zelais is, like, claiming it as his room, but you could turn that into another crew quarters if you wanted to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll turn that into his little uh, ass, too. He's like, isn't he a half <laughs> He's a He's got a room. He's a room for himself. Happy days. You know what I mean? Take some of the the bed. Uh, my point being is, as long as they fit on the ship and you can find places for them to sleep, you've got room. You're not. That's not a great concern. The thing is, we um, could always split the top section in half, so you've got the epoxy units, and then you've got other. Um, it's true. So, you could retrofit that into a larger crew space if you wanted to. Absolutely. Just a quick question. Um, do all of us already have quarters? Um, I, the captain has a personal quarters. Lace has taken what was supposed to be the captain's room uh, <laughs> and claimed it for himself. Uh, but there are two crew quarter rooms. And I will say, like, you have that big upper area in normal, like, galleys. Um, like, in the real world, in like galleys and man of war and like big ships, there are entire floors that are just filled with like hammocks. So if you wanted to take that second floor of yours and just turn that into like a crew quarters, and then I think that would open up the bottom floor to have a free room for each of you guys if you wanted, um, which is kind of fun that your party each has their own room. And then you could have like a crew, a general crew quarters on the second floor. Um, wow. You could have a lot of people stay there. Cool. If you wanted, just as an idea. Um, I'll tell you what, there's only one other individual who would have came up to your, I'm looking at the other, yeah. There's only one other individual who would have come up that you might have had interest in. You see this individual come up with translucent skin and white hair. Um, it seems to like consistently just almost like flow in a wind that does isn't there. Um, uh, he goes, um, it's good to meet you all. I am Selir Windcaller. It's a great pleasure to make your acquaintance. I am a sailor, but more than that, I am a wind mage. Now, I know you don't have a lot of canvas aboard your ship, but the winds can be tumultuous. Winds can be tricky. And I specialize in wind magic. If you need someone who has the power over the winds um, and the weather, I have such powers at my beck and call. I myself am an air genasi, and I heard that you all serve under an earth genasi. Uh, wind and earth on one ship, what can you ask for? for? So he's there as well as another, wow. as your <laughs> Let's get a hold of him, fuck it. Um, uh, so I mean, you wanna go talk I... to him? Oh, wouldn't be opposed to more bodies because event we're we're gonna get it. We we already have a big job on the hook from this royal people that I'm sure it's gonna give us enough to give money. And like one thing I found during our ship battles is that we had just enough 
but like we had had the Celine fill in a lot of roles. So I don't know. I'm kind of, I, I don't think overstocking on crew is a bad idea, but that's where my head is at. As far as how to pay them right now, I'm willing to use all of the Hosian money I make right now to just like make sure these folks are paid for it. I, uh, I also think bigger ship, bigger fights, bigger crews that might jump into our ship. Yeah, because you might need to abandon a position to get someone else or send someone else to another position. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I, I, so, I agree with that. But... What are the... Uh, down to what we can actually afford. What are the people that are actually there thinking... We can just say that the the whole crew came out for this if you guys want. Like this is important enough that maybe because you guys are just dicking around on the ship, like you're not doing it. So maybe you all come out for crew hiring so you can, you know, make life easy on us. Oh, we've got a big uh, ship. Just so you know, just as a quick note with all the people you've decided to hire, um, the former Captain Aaron Thornfield, um, Tressa Vesh, and Kalara Brightbeam, and then also your four additional just basic sailors would be charged, like who would be making far less. Uh, they would be making two silver a day. Um, you guys are currently at 53 gold a week in expenditures. Just so you know. For crew costs. Do you want to talk to the Goliath? Yeah, let's talk to this Goliath guy. All right. Big, towering, stoic, giant shouldered individual. Uh, Branner, sky shield, gray skin, um, the black intricate markings, and is de definitely has that like. Certainly bare chested, but still that piratey like belt over the shoulder. Um, you do see that he has at his hip um, a grappling hook and a line, sort of like ready to go. Um, he has like a big fuck you boarding axe strapped to his back. Um, he he looks like a guy who's built for boarding. Um, he also has like I'll say that the he also has like a number of like daggers across a bandolier on his chest. Um, and he says. Well, good to see you there, uh, Mr. Captain, sir. Brown or Sky Shield. Um, I'll say that too. He has a he has a shield, so he has a shield and axe. Um, he says, made for boarding I am. Um, it's my specialty. Very good at boarding. Uh, I specialize in uh, stealthy roguish ability and also the feral barbarian nature of my people. So I'm a barbarian rogue multi-class, my friend. That's like... Uh, size it, as you heard him like list off his skills, he's been sizing him up with the waist, kind of like saying like, hmm, could be a good combo there. He, uh, 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 how many, uh, uh, boardings have you led there, friend? Uh... Plenty more than I, I can count, Captain. Yeah. But I, I assure you, I got, I got, I'm very successful. Uh, and he'll start like, he's got some scars, and he'll like go through the scars. But like, see, oh, I survived a battle boarding uh, uh, one of them scorpion ships with the scroll here. Oh, in the last war, I was sort of a mercenary. Uh, I know. What were you type like your your war vets? I'm not a war vet per se, but I did fight as a mercenary where I learned my boarding skill. I was only in for the last year or so. But I've been probably my trade for quite a while now. And I uh I like to think I do a pretty good job. Tier is guiding me well. Uh, let's say so. Hmm. And then I'm gonna look at our crew because we're not the tankiest crew. That's why I Kind of want to get us a meat shield here. Oh, 
Why does everyone call me that? I like it, but it's, it's, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I bet you do, my friend. I bet you do. Hey, how's this? Um, chill. I don't really have a specific rule for you, but I've got. Let, let me help you out, like Captain. Freaking... Let me let me help you. T- let me tell you my process, if that's all right with you, and that might help you decide Please if I'm worth it to you or not. All right. So sometimes there's magicy folk, and they like take me aboard with their magicy stuff. And then I sneak up to the captain real quiet like. And then I drive a knife right through his fucking neck. And then he ain't no more. Or if it's a more big bad fight, I'll take my grappling hook here. I'll throw it onto the other ship. And sometimes I get help. But every now and then I got to do it myself. Because, you know, you want something done, you do it yourself. I'll, I'll, I'll just reel that fucker in. Ah, one pull at a time. And then when that ship's right up to the next ship, I jump aboard, pull out my fucking axe, and start going to town. Huh. And that's my process. So I can do it real sneaky like, or I can do it real big and loud type. It's whatever you want, Captain. Well, how about this, friend? I want, I want you, and I think I, I think a couple others here will be interested as well. Now, we've got big jobs coming, which means big pays coming. However, we pay. don't have that big pay right now. Right. Now, the second I confirm this big job and know that I'm going to need to need whatever hands I'm going to need for it, if I can count on you there, then I think we'll have a deal. Uh, so what you're saying is you ought to hire me, but you don't want to pay me. No, no, no. I cannot pay you currently, but I will pay you largely very soon. Oh, okay. Well, it was nice seeing you. And you all stand up and leave. Call me if you ever get money. All right, I can live with that. I don't die for free. I um so right. I, I I just would, I just want to know how much uh, Ed would have right like collecting from his Hogan friend that that we have to offer you know like uh, the the, uh, the the guy that sells the quadrants. Oh yeah, you've already been paid for that. You wanted to go by and pick up your royalties. Um, let's see how much does he got for you. Uh, today is this one. Say one ninety-two. Um, ooh, I probably need to have a number before. So let's see here. I'll be. Uh-huh. Um, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, um, three, six, seven, five. Um, he did. He. Oh, okay. okay. Let's do it this way. Uh, he'd hand you 175 gold pieces for what okay. you... Uh, he says he'd technically be giving you tomorrow's as well, but it's like the end of the day, so he's like, whatever, I'll give you tomorrow's as well. Okay. Cool. Yep, so it's the end of the day, and you guys have to go impress uh, a wizard, uh, a court wizard. Uh, you gotta, You gotta go over the uptown and impress him into giving you this job that he has in mind for the big payout. But indeed, you will need to impress this client. Uh, yes, Captain. While in the process of acquire, well, acquiring uh, Bright Bean, I did also follow up on a central job that I had acquired from the palace. And the proconsul wants to meet you. All right, then. We're, uh, we're to it. I hope you like the theater. Uh, depends on what's shown. Couldn't tell you, but um, I must confess, um, 
he did very much specify not to bring Shaka. The royal palace is royal. They can't be seen associating with scroll. Well, oh yeah, it's royal palace. Let's uh, why well, say you take me there? Uh, they they wanted to meet me. How about um. Basano, probably. Mm. And, uh, how about you, me, Basango? Uh, Chaplin's got his clubs around here. Shot, will be helping. Sorry, where are we going? The theater to speak with the proconsul again. Yes, of course. You might want to take a uh, bright beam with you. I, I that, might, that, that might be a good idea. I mean, this was the guy that suggested her, right? That's true. And, uh, I wasn't seemed, sure if she was too busy celebrating, you know? Sounded like it seemed, he seemed to be best with her, so you know, maybe if you can impress upon them the fact that you've gotten her on the crew, that might do a little to Is she sober, shine in our favor. She was drinking a lot when we found her. Yeah. Like I said, that'd be up to bright me of herself. Yeah, we'll just look over at her. She like double fisting. <laughs> She's like, I got hired. She got like the champagne bottle in the corner. Uh, <laughs> she's she's, she's having a good night. Yeah, you know, no, it's a. Uh... You know what, since you said he's so keen on just me and me, Besan, uh, let me just go meet at the rift. You guys hold down the floor here. I, I need someone to rank with the rest of the crew here, uh, Besan, as well. As far as the new ones. Uh, and, uh, yeah, let's uh, get everyone acclimated. Introduce each other and have yourselves a good night. Here, the, he's going to give five gold to you, so I'm down to 170. Have, uh, make sure everyone's a little happy with their new jobs. Got it. Um, got it. Uh, okay. You just kind of, yeah, you tell them to like go right there. They'll you just tell your crew members to all go right there and start getting acclimated. Uh, no problem there. Um, Let's deal with that first before we do anything else. A uh, bit of people going back to the ship. Um, so Shaka, let's let's see how you're acclimating um, as we head back to the Prophet's demise. Um, let's see, you got your half in there. Is pipes to cook, and last is. I'm still on. I'm just making a cup of tea. Nice. Um, so I'm just putting the last note in because I'm trying to just keep track of all of your new crew members over here on my notes, so it can be a little quicker on the draw. Um. And she is in the medic stuff. Okay, you guys head back to your crew with, uh, into your ship with, oh, well, we're not doing that just yet. So, Shaka, you are the crew, you are the cook, uh, which means the galley is your place to be. Um, it is decorated, I need to decorate it on the actual map. But um, this, my friend, this room right here, is where you're going to be spending most of your time. Uh, this little, this little room back here. Uh, you walk in; it is fully equipped. It's got everything that you're going to need to keep things running around here. Um, is there anything that Shaka would immediately like? You know, it's got it's got the cooking utensils. It's got all of the basic gear. Is there anything Shaka would do to get comfy? Mm 
You're muted. Shaka will find a place where she can uh, sit and play her axe. Even if it's not in the galley, but she'll find a place where she can sit on the ship and play. Uh, there is no shortage of places where you can sit and begin Some to... Some place uh, with good acoustics. Uh, you look for a place with good acoustics. Yes. Um, hmm. I would say right now the best place with acoustics is probably the uh, the very empty upper area that really doesn't have a purpose right now. Just metal walls, so it kind of reverberates a lot of sound off of it. Especially for one that has such an electric sound as yours, it's going to be good. So you kind of sit up there and... And just kind of yeah. play your guitar. Have a good time. Um, yeah, Zalace, you you come out and you're like in your little bathrobe with your slippers on, and you just make your way to the next door, head into the galley, make yourself a little cup of tea, head back to your your big new room. Um, and uh, yeah, things are going pretty good aboard the ship. I just need to uh, I just need to equip your ship with a galley, so. I will be I will be doing that momentarily. Uh but in the meantime, uh ooh, I like that little piece over there. Uh you guys all head back to the ship with Kalara Brightbeam, your gnome artillerist, with uh Tressa Tidewalker Vesh, so she'll be known as Tidewalker, um, who is also an artillerist. Captain a or we're gonna delete Captain from the name, but uh Arian Thornfield, um, who is uh, got spell jamming capabilities. Uh, and then your your standard crew, George Swift Fist, um, uh, Solaire, uh, Dromain, Risa Stormbrace, and Lyra Raven Shane all come back to the ship with you. Uh, none of them all sound exactly like the next one. Huh. Um, okay. You board the ship. Um, what does that look like? Uh, is that I hear that Basan is doing this, being the quartermaster? Okay, Basan, uh, you're the quartermaster. It is, um, you were told by the former quartermaster who got fired, but nonetheless was good at his job, that it is your job to be the spokesperson for for the crew. So these people are, are, are your people to take care of. They're your job, they're your primary focus. Um, how would you introduce them to the ship? What, what, what does that look like? So these are the, the, the specialized crew. This is the whole, this is everybody that you've hired. So this is basic crew, specialized crew, all of them. I'm not good with words. This is going to be hard, probably for all of us. But the good news is it just gets better from here because everybody else is better with words than me. And the ship is cool. And the captain is really, really smart and does awesome things. So keep that in mind. The halfling puts her hand up. Hey, um, we should all, we should, I'm Bisan. My name's Bisan. Um, thank you for reminding me that I should tell you that my name's Bisan and I, I shoot things. And, and, and uh, apparently I, I buy food and stuff. Um, yeah, and um, uh, that's Kalara and she's really nice. And she's also an artillery. Why don't you tell us about yourself, Kalara? Oh, well. Like, oh, hi everyone. I'm Kalara. I, uh, I, I, I'm, I, I specialize in artillery, and I'm uh, uh, working on new advancements in in the field of arcane, um, sort of like enhancing siege weaponry with arcane foci. And I'm uh, just doing my best and excited to be aboard uh, a ship. Finally, I've got some work in a little while, and this is going to be great. You're really smart, like our captain. So I think that you'll have fun here. Um, and you look awesome and you're good at underwater things. And this ship goes underwater. So 
I think that's a good match, even if I'm like this. Tidewalker, the, uh, the Crichton says, oh, um, thank you. Um, you can call me Tidewalker. That is the nickname I've been dealt with. I am, but if you must, if you want to know, my real name is Tressa Vesh. I'm also an artillery specialist, and I also specialized in um, spell jamming or aiding in crews to spell jam in aquatic settings. So I am uh, obviously trident and ready to aid in that way. So uh, good to be aboard and excited to, bunk, to, to work on such a, an advanced ship. Sound looks at her. <clears throat> Do you spar? I, I've been known to, um, here and there. Do you enjoy sparring? It's necessary to be able to fight well. I enjoy it. And then she'll look at the, the elf and say, I feel like the whole ship, like the whole crew and you have so much in common. And I'm glad you're here. I'm Bison. I don't remember. I'm sorry. I'm really nervous. Right. She's kind of I... And like, she's like tucking her lips under so that nobody sees her little serrated teeth, but she's not veiled. Got it. Uh, nobody, nobody seems to mind too much. You may be getting some looks from some of the basic crew members. The specialists don't really seem to care too much. Um, like not bad looks, just like oh shit, like never seen one before, kind of thing. Um, and same with, uh, and I think even more so with uh, Tidewalker. And again, not in like a bad way, just in like, a, oh, I've never seen a Triton before. Um, and the elf will, Andaranatishan, friends of the Prophet's demise, um, I am was formerly a captain, now simply Arian Thornfield. I lost my ship on a rescue mission some ways back, but I have been to this side of realm space and back many times, and hope to be of some assistance to the captain in a spell jamming capacity. I am not the primary spell jammer aboard the ship I've been led to believe, but nonetheless, I will serve however is best for this vessel. We've lost three. But we keep three upgrading, what? so it's fine. And she kind of smiles and moves on. So everybody's like three. Part what? Of the ship. Three what? Three what? <laughs> and and you kind of keep going. <laughs> that was intentional. <laughs> the next, the next part of the ship, and she'll, she'll um. Is there cooking going on right now? That's up to the cook. Yeah, I'll be cooking. All right, I need to know what it smells like right now. Um, it smells savory and hearty. All right, so if the kitchen is smelling really tasty, like this is a place that we want to be eating, I'll run them through the galley. Oh boy. Because this is the place that we eat. And I'm, I'm well, This is the place where the food is made. You guys, you guys eat in the mess hall. Would, would they, would they not go into the galley ever? I guess that they would never go into the galley then. They know they there. No, they go into the galley. Like if somebody just like wants a snack or something, like yeah, they'll go into the galley. But crew meals happen in the mess hall. Okay. No, I'm just you know wanting to maybe create some advantage of the smelling of good things when I take them into a place where they will eventually find. Right. <gasps> so things smell nice. Right. Smells good. Smells savory. I'd like to introduce them to our chef. And our bard. Uh, very we have mixed. Entertainment on this ship. <laughs> very mixed impressions immediately. 
Um, when they, they walk, walk in, in, some people. Yeah, right. Chuck will be like, oh yeah, it'll be done soon. Uh, it's almost done. Big, nice, nice stew and uh, some, bake some bread. And she some... has her back to everybody at the moment. Got it. Are you like trying to hide? No. no. No, no. Okay. I'm just busy. I don't know how many people are with Bassan. I hear Bassan come in. <laughs> There's like... A, a gangle of individuals. There's uh, aside from Basan, there's seven different crew, new crew members who are behind her. And I will, I, and I will say, "Hey, Shaka, we got the new crew." Oh, oh, shit! And they'll turn around and be like, "How's it going?" Uh, I, I think people are stunned. He's our see... chef <laughs> and a bard. Her food is tasty, and so are her jokes. Don't worry, uh, I defected from the scrow. I'm, 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 I'm a no scrow now. <laughs> and we're walking. <laughs> uh, make me a persuasion check, uh, Shaka. I'll give you advantage because Basan is trying to be, trying to help you out. Ooh, that's an 18 on the dice plus six. So 24. 24. Um, you, you make a good first impression as much as you can. Um, people still walk away with a little bit of a, like, a bewildered look in their eyes. Um, if you wanted to be specific about that, you could, at some, or, I guess, Bassan could try and turn around at some point and, and look at the crew and try and figure out who's having the biggest reaction, who's not, but... I would very much just... like to. Okay, make me an insight check, see who's got, what, what kind of reactions are going on. Meanwhile, Shuck is humming to herself. <laughs> and it's not it's not it's an 11 i, I don't know 11 yeah um the, the the four crew members are um the, or sorry the four sailors like the four basic sailors they're all they are all definitely like like they're like kind of giving looks to each other like they're kind of they don't know each other very well so they're keeping to like themselves but one or two of them are becoming a little more familiar, like looking each other. Um, you're not getting a read. Just like not like a uh screw, but like definitely like didn't expect that. <laughs> <laughs> it looks on their faces. That's the best you got. The specialists, however, are have definitely their their personalities have like muted whatever whatever gregariousness there was amongst any of them has simmered down. So I think. Kalara being the most like doo -doo 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 -doo. I think she's just kind of gone neutral but more than that you can't read anything from the three you don't know if any of them are feeling particularly good or bad other than that and we will continue on um beyond if you need any food come and see me and she's like wave like Forrest Gump <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and then like the rest of it's just gonna be like the regular here's what stuff is. She'll ooh and ah over the over the quadrages. She'll talk about the the changes to the mangonel that the captain has in, in store. Um she'll she'll ooh and ah appropriately over the over the, the individual things. And then bring them back onto the ship and say, or onto the, the, I don't know if it's a helm or a, this whole thing seems like it's enclosed, so I don't know if there's a massive area. Uh, you could take, if you want to like have a cool final moment, you can take them to the bridge. Yeah. Like, bridge. none of these, not, other than uh, Arian Thornfield, the, the potential spell jammer, these people are going to spend a lot of time on the bridge unless summoned by the captain or yourself. So it's kind of like a, it's a fun thing for the new recruits. It's like, oh, you get to stand where the cabin's gonna stand and whatever. And they get to kind of like look out the front of the uh, the open windows and look ahead. Um, yeah, you bring them all in there. So she'll 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 bring them all up with them looking at her with her set up like kind of next to where the captain would be sitting. I, like I feel like it's it's the deck of the Enterprise kind of thing. Yeah. So she'll look at them and say, you have questions, ask. Um, let's see. 
I, I'll skim over some very basic questions, like, uh, very logistical, nonsensey, like, when is meal time, blah, blah, blah. Um, the more relevant questions, I think Kalara says, um, I was told that there's going to be a workshop. Where's that? Oh, um, I'm sorry that that hadn't been done on the tour, and she would have absolutely been like, let's, let's go look at that right now. Uh, in fairness, the, it, I don't think that's been established yet, or a place has been picked for that yet. Um, but you you could tell her that like it's going to happen essentially. Then what I would say is the captain is the captain is determining what that space will be, and if this is something important to you, then you and the captain. Um, I think the captain would want your feedback on the making of it. So you should talk to him for that. Yes? Uh, okay, cool. Uh, very diplomatic of you, Basan. She brightens up. She seemed she seemed to like that answer very much so. Um, like um, this is a new ship, so we can shape the space a bit. Yep. Tressa will say, uh, who serves as the bosun aboard this ship? I imagine I'll have to speak to him regarding certain elements of the ship's passage that is chaplain he is an autonome and he is a cleric of girl glitter gold and he has a bag of animals and they're friendly but you can't eat them <laughs> all of the seven of them like look around each other like there <laughs> you can't, can't, can't eat the bosun's pets. Fair enough. Um, and other than that, I I think you see like the elf to the back. Like he's not asking any questions, but you can see like the quiet reserve that's that that says to you like, oh, I'm gonna have to talk to him in private for sure. Um, but everyone else just seems like ready to get to business. Nobody seems to have any other big questions. Then I'm going to send everybody to the mess for a quick meal, and I'm going to talk. I'm going to ask the above the table. I'm so sorry. I can't remember his name, but Bisan would have. She's very smart. Uh, it's okay. His name is Arian. Arian. Thank you. Thornfield. No problem. All right. Here we go. Last name not nearly as important. Here we go. Uh, yeah, you sort of send everybody away. He holds up. He holds back. Um, and he says, uh, if you'd excuse me, quartermaster, I would like a word. I thought you would. What does that mean? I served in the Elven Armada for six years with Elric and Lunaba. I saw what the scroll did. I understand i think maybe why you have reservations yes perhaps i should begin you seem to have presumptions about what i am going to say to you perhaps. and i would like to speak for myself if you do not mind please she's clearly not truly a scrow. She is only half. I have never seen mighty in size as she is. I have never seen a smaller scrow, so she is half. I don't know you and I don't know her very well, but if you served under Lunar Bow, I expect you, and as you clearly seem to understand the, the reservation, Seems kind enough. I would ask where you picked her up. What you know of her. I know that she has papers saying that she is exonerated of any 
ill doing of the scroll and these papers are official? I would like to see these papers. I will gladly give, show them to you. If, I know that when we were attacked by the cult of Baphomet, they charged in and went down like a shield. That's not nothing when you just start with a crew, right? I've seen them make merry and cook good food. I've watched them You're protect my crew. Understood. And I get a good feeling and whatnot. Your crew has entanglements with the Celts of Bathians. If by entanglements you mean we killed them, then yes, we tangled with them. Well, let me see these papers, and if I like what they say, then I will be happy to continue uh, my promised service. I am glad to hear that. Would you join us in the mess hall, and I will procure the papers for you. Very well. Uh, and he will, he will walk to go to the mess hall. And while we are in the uh, midst of, oh, in the in the midst of, yeah, serving, no, you, I, uh, sorry, you go ahead, sorry. Uh, she will go to. Um, <laughs> She'll go to Shaka and ask about the papers. Shaka will uh, nod and uh, produce the paper, but she'll say, if you don't mind, I'd like to stay in sight of the paper. Is that okay? That is more than okay. Do you prefer that I bring the one who wants to see it here? They're in the mess hall. I don't know how I could show them the paper and not show the others that I'm showing them the paper. Do you understand? I understand. It's okay. I can, I can wait in here. Follow me and watch me through the door. Okay. Okay. And uh, she will go to... Uh, She'll go to Arian and mm -hmm. say, I would prefer to do this subtly, but I have them in my hand. Will you step He'll out? He'll stand up and follow you out. Yeah. Uh, he follows you out into the hallway. Um, and he'll give you like, um, like to be like, maybe I'm playing it a little more seriously, but he like, he's, like polite about this process it's it's awkward but it's something that he needs um and he'll like see you shock and like give you a little like nod uh and take the paper from yubasan and he will stand there and thoroughly read it uh look down at the signature and look at shaka and look back at yubasan and give the paper to yubasan and say you have a spell gem Thank you. I would never do anything to dishonor his memory. I believe he would like her. I never and... served with, with Luna Bow. But he, like, from what I know, he, like many, was an individual of great honor. And to my mind, the people you crew with 
they are an extension of your own reputation. The jobs you do are an extension of your own reputation. Some people say, I'll do whatever they want. I'll do whatever for money and teach their own. To me, who I crew with, what jobs I take, what actions my superiors take are a reflection of my approval as well. If the Alvin Armada has venerated her and these papers are to be believed, then I suppose that's all there is to it. Welcome aboard. Does that 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 warrior's yeah. arm clasp and make sure that the papers get put back in into Shaka's hand and yep. All right. So put the papers away. She, all right, who's hungry? And she'll bring out like big pot of stew and uh then bring out like all sorts of bread and delicious baked goods. Um the stew is like a hearty beef stew with potatoes and veggies in it. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, yeah, you bring all of that out and you feed them, and I think people will be surprised by the exopox units, and probably in a good way for the most part, where they're like, oh, look at these guys, they got fucking robots. Um, yeah, and, uh, and that's that. Very cool. Um, sweet, so now let's swing around to the theater. Um, you guys will find your way indeed to the theater um, where you will find yourselves uh, a little underdressed perhaps uh, as you show up and see people in very fine clothing um, dressed to the nines. Uh, this is like, this is high society theater. This is, uh, um, you know, people aren't, this is like a big event. This is like going to the opera uh, women are in beautiful uh, dinner gowns. Uh, men are in like, uh, you know, medieval time versions of such, but like suits or military garb, uh, ornamented very much so. You guys, uh, I think Etherith, you picked up some fine clothes. Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, you, Mr. George, however, stick out like a sore thumb. Um, is Would you guys have picked up some fine clothing on the way for Ed? Um, that sounds like something that would have crossed Etheris' mind, so he might have, off like, offered to <laughs> buy him a change of clothes. Uh, we're, looking to make, we're looking to make the best impression here, so you might want to not be in your usual attire. Yeah, uh, that on you, I believe, right? Okay. Ed, what is your what does your formal wear look like? What outfit does Ed point at and say that's the one? Oh, I would say something kind of sparkly, you know, because he's like, <laughs> he's like like you know, like uh, kind of like his usual color palette, but it'd be like very sparkly, would stick out. Uh, you know, to him it would look awesome. So like maybe higher class, old rich, it'd be loud. That reminds me of Firefly when Kaylee picks out the pink flu frilly dress. Yeah. <laughs> I I I imagine Ed shows up looking like MJ with his like bedazzled blazer. <laughs> um, yeah, there we go. It's basically the same outfit except with sleeves and bedazzled. Um uh and it's it, and maybe like not leather and is like a nice polyester or something like that. So uh, you show up with that. Like, and, and the way Ed's feeling around it, it's like that meme that's like, damn, that motherfucker got that shit on. I got that shit on for real. Ed feels like he's got that shit on, you know? Like yeah, you're like feeling it. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's pretty nice out there. Why you gotta get used to this? Theater? Yeah, she she got a nice meal beforehand. Uh, uh, do you like theater at this? I uh, I, I was telling Chaplin I'm developing a bit of a tight five, mostly stories, but. Etheris like takes a few seconds to think. I think I do. I just don't. I mean, I've never seen it, but. 
Something tells me I do. Hmm. Well, just, we'll have to see if they're any good. We'll find out shortly, Dutch, but uh, lead the way. And uh, your, uh, your your friend here, you know, they, they do know we're coming, right? Ah, well, he chose the venue. Okay, well. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. You walk in and you see uh, a number of individuals. Um, I'll just draw a few. Sense of the interior. Um, it, you know, people are start, sort of standing outside of the door, and he has like many servants around him, but you see, again, dressed very well. Um, and as a reminder for you, Ed, you see this very stereotypically elderly wizard looking individual, sort of Gandalf, sort of Saruman-y looking like with the long uh, gray beard and the long hair. Um, but the hair is sort of like tied back into a bun. So he kind of has like a, in this moment, he's kind of got like the sexy bearded grandpa look going on a little bit with like the fine uh, tailored suit and outfit that has sort of gilding, like it still has the, um, the signs of like an arcanist about it, but it is still very high end formal. Um, what he's wearing is probably like three times as expensive as what you guys have picked out. Um, and he goes, and he comes up to you, Etherith, or you come up to him, I presume. And he goes, Ah, Etherith, my new friend, good to see you again. And he will shake your hand. Good to see you. And uh, allow me to introduce my captain, Captain Ed Jord. This is captain Proconsul Ed Godric. Captain Ed Jord, pleased to meet you. Long awaited. I've heard much about you. Shakes your hand. Likewise, I am. Uh, apologize for the delay. Well, that's quite all right. You seem to be just on time. Well, let us head on in. I have been very excited to see uh, this production. Um, are either of you fond of the theater? I hope so. Uh. Well, Ether of here was just telling me that they are. They're just not sure what kind of theater specifically, I'd say. Well, I hear that this particular production uh, is a bit darker. Uh, it's a bit of a, a bit of a darker flavor, uh, mythologically based, I'm told. It's, uh, uh, I have been very excited to see it. I've heard good things, I've heard good things. Uh, but please, let us proceed inside, and I might get the measure of it. Um, you guys walk inside. Um, he's going to hand some tickets and invite you guys in. You're with him. Um, you're going to see... Uh, uh, let's see here. Okay. Hmm. Oh, man. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Here we go. Okay, uh, you walk in. Um, there, the place is sort of magically lit by various dancing lights that are across the top. You see many people very well dressed um nobles and merchant princes um and princesses with uh beautiful individuals across their arm um settle in here and there uh to different places you guys get a box seat to watch the theater production um as it is to be presented um he sits down and he's going to look at you ed and he's going to say so tell me uh good sir uh as you perhaps may know, I am uh, looking to hire a captain. Now, you have a vessel unlike any other, but the vessel isn't everything. It's the man who pilots it. So, well, perhaps in this case, the Genasi who hire, pilots it. But regardless, I would like to know who I'm in business with. So why don't you tell me about why you are the captain better than any other for the job? 
So that kind of like takes like a long moment to consider that because uh, captain is never really a goal, but something he thought about thinking. Maybe not. Well, being a captain, not something I, I look for. I found me. I, uh, and I know that some use that as verbatim, but I truly, I, uh, it did fall on me. And just as I saw two former captains fall before me, I uh, felt the need to pick up the reins as, uh, as it were by uh, my family. He'll pause now. Yeah. We've, uh... Well, I poke, and he and he takes the pause. Like you get the sense, this guy's a bit of, he's a bit arrogant, you know. He's a nobleman, um, and he says, "I see a captain who understands the weight of failure uh, out there in the abyss of the astral sea." That's good to hear. Uh, I hope you don't mind my saying that. There are some captains who are um, a, a bit too certain of themselves. Of course not. And, uh, no, I, uh, I believe in calculated decisions. I, uh, well, by the same means, I don't believe there's a situation can't survive. It's just finding the means, finding the methods, figuring out the puzzle. I uh, don't believe in failure as an inherent variable, but more of just uh, more of a, of a variable in itself, as opposed to the overall equation. Hmm. Well, I hope success is something that is also in your vocabulary. It is, and uh, it's also in our record. Uh, now, has... tell me this. You are a uh, you are an Earth Genasi. I have met your kind here and there. Uh, and you, uh, those plain-touched folk maybe are um, you're very particular. Uh, how do you feel about the water? Are you... Uh, does the water terrify you? Oh, I, uh, In fact, just today, we, uh, hired a... Triton. Our, uh, water specialist. Ah. Wanted to cover all of our corners. That's representative of our crew. Thoroughly crewed? I see, I see. Oh, you must tell me, Captain Edgeward. I have spoken to Ethwith at length, and he is very skilled in the use of his words, but you must tell me, uh, well, what kind of crew member is he? Is he so well, make trouble for you? He kind of, like, pats your shoulder, Ethereth, as if, like, you know, being a buddy. Ethereth, like me, was fallen into a position of their existence. They, uh, they haven't had much of a choice, and so... For that matter, for that fact, I, I feel they're the one to go to when it comes to making choices. Hmm. See. Hmm. Well, we have but, I think, enough time for one question. So let me ask you this then, Ed. You, well, Etherith, perhaps, uh, certainly may have some aspirations, um, but certainly you are speaking to me. I am, of course, Pro Consul Goldrick Main, after all, and I have connections within the palace. What are your aspirations then, Captain? Do you mean to establish yourself here amongst the nobility of the Rock of Brawl? That takes a moment. Uh, what's another? Well, there is something out there far, far more nefarious than anything in the Rock of Brawl. A being that wishes to leave everything in his path. Darkness. Darkness, you can't turn lights on. I seek to bring this person down. I, uh, my crew has uh, accepted that task. They each have reasons of their own. And uh, that's the name of the Prophet's demise. Mm, I see, a path of revenge or, or bringing goodness, a uh, fine tale to be told. Hmm. Well, I am rather liking the sense of you, uh, and as the lights begin to dim, he says, oh, well, let's, let's watch the show first, of course. Um, and as the lights dim, the audience all settles in quiet, 
Uh, let me just change the atmosphere, make it a little more spooky. <laughs> All right. You two sit back at a night at the theater. Yeah. Uh, you sit back for a night at the theater here. Um, here at the Royal Theater Company on the Rock of Brawl, uh, it is otherworldly in here. Indeed, the theater itself is grand with an enchanting chandelier that casts a soft magical glow over the large fish seating. The walls adorned with celestial murals depicting constellations and mythological figures. Um, but it is a stage that captivates the attention. Um, the artistry and theatrical presence is foreboding of the play to come. As the lights begin to fade down, magically so, uh, a mist begins to rise from the floor of the stage. Uh, um, Swirling around the edges uh, like tendrils of a waking dream, Soft whispers seem to emulate from afar, as though the very fabric of reality is thin within this theater. The curtain draws back to reveal a figure standing. You see uh, a beautiful woman adorned in black garb. She stands with a torch blazed with purple flame in her hand uh, and two other women at her side. Um, bearing daggers and keys. Standing alone at the crossroads, her silhouettes outlined against a dark, star-filled sky as the backdrop of the stage shimmers with illusory images of the night sky that twinkles at the light, creating the sensation that the audience is peering into the depths of the cosmos itself. The woman, uh, her robes flow and are caught in an unseen wind. She wears a crown that glows faintly with silver light, and she steps forward with a glowing staff in hand. Um, a burst of blue and purple fire <laughs> dance at her feet, coming off from backstage beautiful pyrotechnics. A tiny burst of blue and purple fire dances at her feet, leaving a glowing sigil behind her as she walks. The sound of distant howling wolves echoes through the theater filling the space with eerie anticipation. Seamlessly, the scene shifts as the crossroad fades, replaced by a bustling mortal world. The transition is fluid, and you witness an entire cityscape materialize seemingly out of thin air. No set pieces are drawn, except that simply the city arrives, and towering buildings lit by torches and magical lamps appear. Um, a sorcerer played by a young human um, with a desperate yearning, steps into the scene. Um, he looks to uh, this robed woman uh, and pleads to him, yearning, um, says, I wish to know the darker things at the edge of the world, great queen of darkness. I wish to know all that is haunting and forbidden, please and grant unto me all the powers of sorcery. And with that, shadowy figures sort of come into the back, haunting whispers amplifying the space around them. His voice carries across the, th the, the theater, beginning to echo, subtly reverberating against the walls of the ceiling. You see the powerful woman uh, in dark robes with the many elements in her hands, displays as she lifts off of the ground, magical illusions swirling around her, the mist on stage, a vortex about her. She appears as a maiden, beautiful and tender, soft and ethereal. Uh, an enormous moon arises, casting pale light across the scene, and a cruel breeze of night passes over you as you sit in the theater's audience. Um, it feels tangible, and as she speaks, her voice is accompanied by subtle harmonies, uh, harmonies from three other women backstage. Um, she says, what is your ambition, sorcerer? Speak to me, 
indeed what you would do for these magics. And the sorcerer says, anything, great queen of darkness. As his ambition grows, so too does the intensity of the scene. And in this act, there's a transformation of darkness. As the cityscape transforms, lights dim, casting long shadows across the stage. The air grows heavy and cold, and uh, the floor itself becomes a swirling mass of spectral energy. Inky black vapors rise from the ground, and so too do hands, like the hands of the dead, rising and twisting around. Um, as souls are trapped beneath the surface of the stage itself. The audience gasps. The backdrop shifts to the landscape of jagged rock, shadowy figures, and ghostly apparitions. Fire <laughs> appears in the background as the young maiden is swapped with the crone, adorned in the same garb, but an older woman still. Um, spirits of the dead boil around the sorcerer, uh, as your seat seems to vibrate faintly and reverberate like the eerie wails that come from the walls, uh, gripping at the sorcerer. Um, you are surrounded by phantoms, and at the climatic end of the story, a maelstrom of energy and destruction comes about. Fires <laughs> lick across the stage, over top of the audience as the audience sort of gasps and in excitement as the flame sort of washes over your face, just enough to feel dangerous, but not, uh, not harmingly so. Reds and oranges burst from the stage as the sorcerer's destructive magics grow and he cackles and laughs, being granted the power of the dark mistress. The very air crackles with energy, um, fracturing like uh, glass, the scene warps. Infernal beasts rise from the ground, conjured by the sorcerer, empowered by the Dark Queen. The audience gasps as demons themselves fill the stage and dance about, cackling hellish beasts with glowing red eyes and fiery breath. Fiery breath. Um, the sorcerer loses control of the power that is unleashed. Um, the lighting shifts to chaotic reds and storm clouds storm above. Thunder rumbles in the theater and the flash of arcane lightning streaks across the sky. And the sound reverberates through your seat uh, and you feel danger in this moment like the entire theater is going to erupt from the power the sorcerer has that he cannot control. Uh, and in this moment, uh, these last moments, the sorcerer drops to his knees and goes, ah! as he descends into madness as the arcane itself wraps around him and all the scene fades to the final act he is but on the crossroads again now the queen embodying the motherly aspect the middle woman offers and gestures her hand with a glowing light um from her dark robes wrapped in golden warmth to the roads ahead she speaks to the defeated sorcerer carrying a message and she says i have empowered you but you have not used these powers well you have used them for dark and profane things and indeed there is power in this but your mind not ready devils befell your mind and magic overthrew your soul but all is not less on the crossroads for there is as always a path to follow one of redemption and one of sorrow. What will you choose, he defeated by what he asked? For there must be balance. The stage bathed in soft, warm light at one end of the road. And she points her hand to the other, where lightning crackles and storm shimmers. And she says, will you partake indeed still in maddening magics of the profane? Or will you redeem yourself for the terrors you have befell this world? And she looks out to the crowd and says, I ask the same of all of you, a path of darkness, or the path that may just well and twist the machinations of your minds. Beware, for all power corrupts. And in this final moment, the Black Queen vanishes from the stage, consumed by a burst of white and silvery light, blinding the audience. And as the light fades, she is gone, leaving only the empty crossroads under the starry sky. The sorcerer himself vanished. As the star twinkles for one last time before fading, the curtain falls. The sound of thunderous applause 
as people stand on their feet in celebration for the performance. Um, the uh, console stands, oh, bravo, bravo, uh, as well. Um, and uh, he looks at the stage and through the thunderous applause, he leans into you, Captain. He says, what an inspiring man. And you know what? I think I will hire you. And with that, we will bring a close to our session.